Yo, 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 once again, we back. This was just a Messengers podcast. I'm Mo. I'm Mike. You know, we can't do this without my dog, of course, Drew Money on the boards. Uh, uh, how y'all feeling? Feeling great, feeling great. How y'all doing? Feeling good, man. Before we even get into this, man, I know y'all probably watching this shit. <laughs> like, yo, did these <laughs> niggas plan to both wear brand ones today? <laughs> my answer to that is no. Hell no. <laughs> I walked in the studio and this nigga's wearing these and I'm like, dog, what the hell? Like, <laughs> that is going to show you we both do this shit, though. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. So. <laughs> my dog Drew, too. We all do this in this room, man. We all do this yeah, shit. Yeah, niggas man. definitely did not play. <laughs> nigga walked in. They said, "What the fuck?" <laughs> how y'all? How y'all been, man? How was y'all week? Good week, man. Good week, man. Beautiful weekend. The weather was good. It was Happy Father's Day. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, weather was good. Uh, it did rain a little bit, but the weather still was good where it needed to be. Good weekend, man. Honestly, can't complain. That's so, Drew. How about yourself? It was good, man. Um, went up to Asheville, did some work up there. Still working on there's more of shooting content and shit. So that was good. I was, um went to Botanical Gardens, went downtown to Asheville. Um it's a lot of white folks in Asheville, yeah. bro. Like it's a whole lot. Like it's like, is it majority? It's like it was like stepping into a time machine, honestly. Damn. Like like just like you go in the stores, it's very like vintage looking everything. You know what I mean? Clothing. Antique style shops. Yeah. That's that's basically everything Word. with the shop shit like that. Um did hit up a lot of um dispensaries. Uh of course, you know, hemp of course. And, hemp and C B D is um legal there. So it was, you know, good to tap into, you know, different different brands and seeing what's out there in Asheville and shit. So it was cool. Um, no complaints, man. I, I was up in the mountains. Uh, first day came outside, it was the trash can was on the ground, bus wide open, um, bear presence. So, yeah, man, there's black bears out there and shit. Are so. oh, you with the bears and shit? Yeah, man. Damn. All the way up the mountain. But um, it was a cool town. They uh, see you fighting with the bear, help the bear? Nah, they don't <laughs> shit. Help my dog, please. That, please bear, that bear getting laid down. <laughs> <laughs> They don't need to help nobody. It's over. <laughs> I know, so we ain't got to do no fighting. Mm, that shit's over real quick. Headshot. <laughs> Headshot. <laughs> I yeah, feel you. Yeah, Aim for the no. head. But um, it was a good week. Uh, did um, a uh, a bar crawl. I uh, shot the recap and you know, YouTube content for that. So that was something I did throughout the week um, for um, Digital Dash Productions. So yeah, man, it was a good week. Getting ready for Miami. Spend volume right four. The you know what I mean? Yep. July 7th through the 9th. My dog on a tour, man. <laughs> we out here, baby. We out here. We out here. That's going to be a, that's gonna be a crazy weekend. My boy getting married on the 9th. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a, it's early a, July. I got some shit going, man. Impactful weekend. Yeah, man. Big teams coming. Big teams coming, man. How's everybody mental, though? Uh, good, man. Good, I'm place, good, man. Brother. Good place, man. Yeah, Real play good. some ball on Sunday. Tunes out there. Nick was out there. You know, we had some good conversations, good vibes, shit like that. Yeah. yeah. So that was good. That was good. Shout Talked about a lot of guys. good shit. That's what's up. Who was getting buckets out there? That's the question. Everybody was getting buckets, yeah, man. Everybody was getting buckets. That's not even a PC answer. Everybody right. was getting buckets. I'm to make sure now. I ain't been on the court, so I ain't Yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, though. That heat, that heat will do it to you, boy. Yeah, Playing that, back on that heat. Yeah. That heat will take your legs real yeah. quick. That shit will take you. I should. I felt like I should have won that game, but it is what it is. <laughs> See, that's what. This is the shit I want to hear right here. No, I had got up seventeen. We was playing game twenty one. Got up seventeen. I think two ended up winning, right? Yeah, two and one. Two ended up winning. Then you start getting hot out there, man. Yeah, Everybody. Man, I was getting, getting a little exhausted. I can't even lie, but I'll get the next one. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'll get the next one. It was good to be out there though. I hadn't played. I hadn't played pickup ball in a minute. Yeah. I usually just be shooting dolo, but to get out there. It was good, right out there, hand in hand. Okay, in uh, the clan. Yeah, the clan is clan good. Clan of hand. Yeah, clan of hand. Well, yeah, yeah, clan. That's crazy because all them people been playing volleyball and shit. And I ain't seen no black people over. No, here. you won't. Yeah, they had a huge volleyball like little meetup or something. Yeah, on, some shit they had going on. Yeah, out there. They it was, was a dumb. big activity. Nah, I mean, that shit was huge. It was like, huge. It was a bunch of people out there. It was a bunch of people out people there. People had tents and coolers and shit on the yeah. sides, and it was a bunch. It was a bunch of shit going oh, on. They were getting busy. Yeah, yeah, right across from the basketball yeah. court. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How was your Father's Day, Mo? It was pretty good, man. Pretty good. We went to the uh, I went to the Juneteenth like little dad, little Juneteenth free festival mm-hmm. out at Riverfront the mm-hmm. day before. Burnt some time all day. It was pretty good. We had a lot of stuff going on there. It was a beautiful scene. A lot of 
you kind of underestimate how many black owned businesses we got until like you actually in a spot where everybody can display what they do. Mm-hmm. But it's a lot of it's, it's kind of inspiring, bro. I'm like, damn, I know there's a lot of people on their shit out here. Like mm-hmm. a lot of people doing their thing, man. Doing their, their perspective hustles, man. Just coming out there, you know, celebrating Juneteenth or whatnot, and she was beautiful, bro. She was real beautiful. Can't cap. That's what's up. I tried Kava for the first time this weekend. Two Chipotle in trouble, man. Oh yeah. Yeah. That shit fire, man. I ain't gonna, <laughs> I ain't gonna cap, man. I hate you gotta go to all the way Mount Pleasant to try it, but yeah, it's worth it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, did did you catch the entertainment aspect out there? All right. So when we got out there, we caught the last act, which was like a uh, like an African like drum step like mm-hmm. group or group, mm-hmm. and that was that was pretty fire. Um, and then that was kind of it because after that they, they let the fireworks go and everybody was kind of gone. Like we caught the back end, like we didn't catch like we was not there for like hours, probably there for like an hour and a half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was still good though. Like we yeah. to say I only been out there and not even two hours. Like I saw a lot of shit. Like yeah, yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, man. It's, this is the season, really. You know, outdoor shit in Charleston. Yeah. Them, oh, yeah. You outdoor really want to be outdoors. Up. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? No, they do the um, Friday to do reggae fest at um. James Island County Park or whatnot. Yeah, I've been so. seeing that, man. I've been meaning to yeah. catch one of those. Yeah, I need to go out there. Yeah. Fridays for me, just, you know, it's, it's yeah. a good day. The for city me. had a lot going on. We had Goody Mob here this weekend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that festival was going on. A lot of parties going on or whatnot for Juneteenth. Yeah. yeah, my cousin wanted me to go out there to shoot for that because um, he was putting it on with a few of his, his partners or whatnot. But for Goody Mob? Yeah. Oh, okay. I went, I went out to Asheville, man. I already had that in the book, so. Yeah. And I needed that time to go ahead and, you know, do something new. Right, so. I feel you, I feel you. That would have been dope, though, because it was out there for sure. CeeLo was there. All yeah. of them was there. Yeah, I saw. I saw. Yeah. So, okay, damn, boy. Charleston really gone up. Yeah, yeah. that's some shit I got to holler at that man. nigga, though. Because he got some shit coming up in Colombia and stuff, so. Or. Yeah, yeah, man. Sound like everybody had a good week, man. Let's yeah, get into good. this thing. It really, it really was good, man. I can't complain at all, man. I think, um, you know, years start to kick up. Y'all know my model, man. With September get here, it's get over ready with. to pack this shit up, man. It's over. You're going to blink and it's, it's December. It's Christmas by the time you blink again. Oh, yeah, definitely, for sure. And I just look at this shit like, man, like six months, that's it. You know, it's, June always go by because, of course, it's my birthday month. But, yeah. man, it's already June. Sorry, nineteenth. Yeah, sorry, nineteenth. Yeah. yeah, today's Juneteenth. Yeah, yeah Juneteenth. Shout out to June for, for it to be Juneteenth. You yeah. know, and yeah, man, July is about to be. I feel like July slows up a little bit. August speeds up. Yeah, and then September, turbo boost. Yeah, it's crazy. It actually feels like a holiday today. Like today felt like a holiday. Yeah, it, it did. did. Yeah. It did. Yeah. It did. Yeah. 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 I had yeah. that feeling too. What you know what a Monday's like for me? All that yeah. yelling. <laughs> <laughs> All that cutting up on a Monday. Hey, 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 you hey. You know what I'm saying? Hey. <laughs> you know what that's like? Like, come on, bro. Like, this shit really felt like a holiday. Now, and it's crazy that, you know, like certain, you know, certain corporations ain't showing that same respect. Like, you know what I'm mm. saying? They use the elite that shit to draw discretion, bro. Like, you got to think about it now. Like, a lot of them jobs don't be recognizing that shit, even though it's a Fed holiday. Come on now. Cause, Wonder um, why? Come on now, Fourth but, of July. Hey, Fourth, Fourth of July. July. All right. You get so, off and holiday pay. Yeah, you, you get how you get that holiday pay for that. Now, y'all niggas coming to work on that nineteenth now. <laughs> <laughs> or use your PTO. All right. Use your PTO. Oh, shit. But I hope it gets better. You know, I'm, uh, I hope you know the rest of the world really gets on yeah. boards and you know give us our, our our flowers. That's due. I mean, it's 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 more that it needs to be given to us. But you know. That's what banks is closed and all of this shit. Come on now, mail didn't run, but the banks hey, closed. So the the, uh, the stock market was closed today, Come but some now. of these businesses ain't closed. Oh, that's crazy! The Come stock on, market, man. you can't trade today. Trash coming. Robin Hood, that shit was like stock market closed today. I was like, oh shit! All right, trash coming a day later. Trash coming a day later. That's a fact. All right. But hey, <laughs> see what I'm saying? It's supposed to be a Fed holiday. Though. Come on now. But look how they do MLK though. though. Come on now. Jobs be open on MLK Day. Like That's a, a fact fuck. too. Mm-hmm. Jobs do. We don't. You don't get holiday pay for MLK Day, bro. That's wild. But hey, Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Labor. Day. You off. You off. Them the ones I really got a gripe with though. Them the ones I really got a gripe. Memorial and Labor Day. What make it? What make it so better than MLK Day and Juneteenth? That's a question that only they can answer. <laughs> they have to. They purposely that set it up like that, man. That's all I got like, to say. You know? Hey, man, these companies will pay for the actions one day. 
<laughs> so I saw some interesting this week, man. Um, they got some shit we got to get into, man. So um, I remember earlier this this year on one of the pods, I can't remember what it was, and I was saying it might have been around that March April time, and I was saying, man, this has been like a slow year for rap, man. Like he was asking me, and it's like, what do you think it is? It's like the big names? I was, I feel like it was the big names, or just like mm-hmm. no. No records, like nobody really been dropping, doing a thing like that. Nobody had a moment yet. Yeah, so then I'm looking, I'm looking at the uh I come across an article that says no rap song or album has been number one for the first time since nineteen ninety three. That's thirty years ago. Thirty years ago, bro. And I remember and it's funny because the thing I sent you yesterday, let me see if I can find it. Um I'm about to do Foggy Raw. Who sampled the Alicia Keys record for mm-hmm. his uh, song "62"? Mm-hmm. And it's like that goes back to the Prince conversation that you brought up, and you talking about what Prince is saying. You know, we won't get to the point now. We're gonna be sampling the sample. That's the sample. That's the sample. And the beat is different, but he got a little it's twist on same, it. But it's, it's the, the same. Thing, it's the same man. thing. And I'm thinking to myself, like, damn. Then also to combine when we were talking about, you know, one day eventually this is gonna be history. And they're going to revisit this time period of music. And from that 1970s to tw- like early 2000s, in the 2010s window, would that be like the, you know, the peak for black music? Like the era, you think about it over history. Because in the grand scheme from 1970, because matter of fact, they got a special that's coming on tonight, matter of fact, for 50 years of hip hop. Mm-hmm. And you got to think, 50 years, probably 200 years from now, that's a small gap. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're going to be studying that time period. Like so we 50 studying years, anything what, it was 1973 to now? Yeah. Basically? Okay. Basically. All right. So I'm looking, and I'm thinking about this shit. Damn, like, no rap song or rap album being number one for the first time in 30 years, bro. Are we, are we crossing over into that window? We've asked before, maybe three, four years ago on this podcast, who's going to be the next big three in rap? We that hasn't really we ain't seen it yet. We haven't seen it. <laughs> Can't even say it really happened. We just ain't seen it yet. So let me read this. Uh, so there hasn't been a hip hop album or song atop the Billboard 200 or 100 chart this year. Billboard reports that the genre's absence from the number one spots represents the longest such stretch in a calendar year since 1993. Um. Uh. Uh, Billboard speculates that this year's hip hop void may have to do with the most popular and reliable artists not releasing projects in addition to the inability of others like Dirk and Youngboy to secure wins, uh, to secure new wins on the Billboard 200. That's fair. So I don't know, man. I don't know what y'all think. Um, I definitely think, like, like you said, like when they look back at this era. Um, this era, like say, like another forty years from now, they're looking at this era as opposed to the first fifty years. You say, I definitely feel like this segment would be like. Can you say a dark, like a dark times, like dark times as far as? It's getting kind of bleak. Success? It's getting kind of bleak. It's I mean, yeah, that's fair. Bleak. That's fair, but we don't know what's going to happen in the next forty years. You know what I'm saying? We just don't know. I know for a fact that uh. It definitely falls in comparison to the first 50 years, for sure. Um, I mean, we've had probably, they've been saying just the 90s alone was the golden era of black music just in Facts. general. Like, that's the whole, that whole decade, like, is is like the, the, the golden era. So, it's like, I don't know, man. That's just one era <laughs> that we had within, within all these eras. So, you know, to say... To say is like we uh we in a dark area right now. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't argue that. I wouldn't argue it. I think, man, when you niggas really got to get back to owning the craft. Right. I'm talking across the board, beats, and just like making music. Thank you. Just period. Because I think when you stop doing that, it becomes how can you say stagnant? Um. You're just yeah, it gets, okay. It gets with, stagnant and stale. It get, it yeah, get that. And then, especially when all the sampling shit. Yeah, man. that's what I'm saying. It's, it's not like new sound. Like when you when we like just like when we was in the '90s, you had 
you had Puff Daddy and all the producers that he had, the hit makers, mm. um, Stevie J, like all these niggas coming up with, with, with sounds. You know what I'm saying? It was some sampling being done, but it was also a lot of original sounds coming from them people. And that's just one, that's just one, yeah. that's just one, like, you know, then you get the Kanye then West, Jay Dillers. the Kanye West, the Dillers. Just Blaze. The hit makers, the, uh, you know, the heat makers. Every, like, it was a lot of, it's a lot of different. Cool and Dre. Yeah, a, a lot of different production groups is coming out. And I'm not saying that's not going on now. It's just that, it, like, what sounds are they making? Like, you know what I'm saying? They like they keep using the sample. I think they got to them like, damn, like I can't. This, can this, I? Do you think that they, is there? It's kind of playing on their psyche. Like, damn, what if I can't make a beat? This beat from two thousand or from nineteen ninety eight or from nineteen eighty seven. Like, I, I, I gotta go back and you sampling a song that's already been sampled. Yeah, I think I think it's nothing wrong with taking elements from a from a from an era, but if you're just taking a song and Dressing it back you might up. Might as well like, make a mixtape. You just man. want, yeah, it's not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to have like some like a sound that's inspired by some shit, I'm with that. But we get to a point with the sampling is just like, you know, I kind of heard this sample like five times in already, so it's like I'm I'm not really interested in hearing the song now. Mm -hmm. Just off that. That's facts. Because even I mean I'm not saying some of the artists don't um don't. Some of the big artists don't do it, but it's not it's not like they foundation. Right. A lot of the top artists that we look to to make good music, like the Drakes, Rick Ross, and you know, anybody else who deliver music, you see what I'm saying? Like they got some original beats in there. Right. You get what I'm saying? So it's like I, I just want niggas to be better across across the scale. I think when you start being a little bit more stern and more strict about the production and the raps that's being laid down, I think we'll get back to that point where it's like, okay, niggas is back to doing this shit some justice. You know, I didn't even mind the sampling like when it was most mostly on like some soul shit. Like I didn't even mind that. Because mm -hmm. for the most part, if you get a if you really if you really uh digging your crates you know, you're really not going to use the same soul samples all the time. And no, that's, you're I, not. I think that's the beautiful, the beautiful side of like soul uh -huh. sampling beats. Like, you're not really going to use, you don't hear too many of the same samples when it comes to them type of beats. But a lot of times nowadays, like, people got that, that, like, it's like a bank of 20 songs that they just picking from. Like, hey, I'm going to just flip this one over. <laughs> What's going on? Like, I don't know, man. We just got to. And think about for the kids in the new era. They'd be like, oh, shit, this shit fire. But they don't know that. That's already a flip from what we heard in 2000. Like, that was a did. flip from some 1980s shit. That's what I'm saying. Like, we don't, we don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that's, I think that's, that's causing me even more of a disconnect because like the young niggas like, damn, like y'all ain't fucking with this shit. And then that we don't fuck with it's like we heard yeah. this Yeah, it's not, And like you said, it's nothing wrong with taking elements of some old shit. Like, you know, So Appalled is sampled from like a, 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 a rock record. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like Kanye would take like a, a, how can I say, like a smooth rock record or whatever the case is, from a whole other genre. And he'll flip it to some other shit. To some, like make it some rap shit. You get what I'm saying? But that just goes through doing your due diligence. Like you now, he's to, really a student of that shit. Like yeah. for real. Like he just wasn't thing, like, on. He just wasn't taking. He just wasn't. Beats. Yeah, I mean, like taking he really songs was and, studying these, these, yeah. these this music, bro. Like he went across all genres. All genres, just to like, find some shit, and then that just goes too long. That come back to the point of artistry will always win. The yeah. artistry, bro, like the artistry, don't treat this shit like a lick. You know what I'm saying? Like, in in, in simplest terms, this shit is a lick. We getting y'all getting a, a whole lot of money to press buttons on computers and make beats and shit, and chop shit down on machines and make beats. Mm -hmm. Like that's not strenuous work. Like it's it's mental work if you really you know doing your thing. But you know. It's gotta you gotta you gotta treat it like an art at the same time, man. I think that's a disconnect, man, with with a lot of not even just beat producers, rappers too. We've been saying that, but you know, you gotta get back to the art, bro. The art gonna always make sure y'all niggas make it through and and have a good standing in, in the long run. We talking about this shit twenty years from now. Uh, I think this year has really been a down down year for rap. It really has. When you when we going into twenty twenty four. There's nothing really that stands out that much to me, dog. And I haven't felt like this probably since, man. I can't even say for real. You know, I, honestly, I'm not just saying that to be on no no PC no, shit. Like I, I really, I, I, 
I cannot, I, I can't remember in my lifetime where I felt like this year completely sucked for rap. There's literally something from from the early On a years. Grand scheme, this year did do yeah, they from do every year that I felt like I've been listening to music around '96, '97. So from up from '96 up until now, every year I could think about something raw that has came from that year. Mm-hmm. This year, right here, maybe one project. That we're gonna talk about later, but uh, like on a grand scale, no, bro, no, no, it, it has been a down year, and it has probably been a lack of you know us not hearing from the big names. But that also speaks to man, who's supposed to be that next big wave, that next big group? We ain't seen it yet, like we, we, you and know, them boys, them boys who's the original big three that was 09, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I still want to hear music from Cole, Kendrick, and Drake, but. I feel like that's by, a, now, that's, by that's, now we should have had like some new niggas ushering in, like crossover. Like yo, like hey, y'all about, y'all pass about to, the torch y'all about to pass shit. the torch soon. Like you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like what these niggas, them niggas, like when in the upper upper thirties, like they about to be four in their forties soon. Cold thirty eight. You know what I'm saying, uh, cold thirty eight. Drake just turned what thirty seven. Them boys are getting Drake old. Drake thirty seven. Drake yeah. Kendrick just turned thirty six. He just turned 36. Yesterday, matter of fact, yeah, right? Yeah, he just turned 36. So it's like, you know, pretty soon, them boys going to be even falling back even more from rapping. Like, you They're know probably going to segue in some artists or, you know, just getting into some other I mean, things. We see, we see, you know, a lot of them are already are. Like, Cole already got his label going. He might just man, fall this back man in. man be playing basketball and yeah, shit. Yeah, like, you, know, you never know. Yeah. Like, so. I don't, I don't know, know, man. It's, it's, it's low-key kind of scary. I can't front. Who's gonna be? It's the low next? key, kind of scary. Where Who? rap music, rap music is trending, bro. You don't think it's in good hands right now? I don't think it's in good standards right now, and we can't depend on the older artists to carry it. It gotta be a smooth transition, like how it was from the eighties and nineties, nineties to the two thousands artists, two thousand two thousand tens artists. Mm-hmm. A smooth transition. Like we ain't even. It didn't. Like I mean, imagine, imagine five to ten years from now, we still looking for Drake and Cole. Not saying if they don't drop music, because when they drop music, it's good. No, we need but we're blood. depending, we're, we're depending on them niggas to drop. Where the new blood at, though. But these niggas, are, bro, we done gave y'all damn near 20 years of music. That's what I'm saying. It would be 20 years, five years from now. It would be. <laughs> 2029? From 09? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's it crazy, would, it right? It 20 years. So it's like... <laughs> what niggas got to step it up, man. How you, how you feel about it... <sighs> Because when you, even when you think about it, the top dogs they would say is like Dirk, Young Boy, Gunna, um, Thug, Thug, Baby, uh, Lil Baby, yeah, Lil Baby, of course. And it's like, I mean, that's that's a cool new generation, but it ain't, it ain't, it ain't and I can't even count Thug for real. I'm just saying, like, he's still relevant as far as like, yeah, but he came into a stardom. Uh, he came into his real stardom like what 2016, 2017? Shit, I say 15, 14. 15, yeah. I say 15. 15 yeah, when he yeah, crossed. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. But it's like for these niggas, and you gotta think Dirk, Dirk is 30 years old. Dirk just turned 30. But he still got his hand on the, the youth. Well, like he's still in his he prime. Youth, he the youth. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. He's still in his prime. But it's like, I seen a double XL cover the other day. I didn't know who not none of them niggas was. And this is the first time I can say it in my lifetime that I did not just, know I who them saw, niggas was. Uh, I just saw one for Atlanta that's about to drop, and I maybe knew it was like 10 artists on there. And I'm usually kind of plugged in with what's coming out of Atlanta of all places, and I, I probably only knew two of them. Mm. And that's no that's no disrespect to anybody else on the cover, because I'm pretty sure, like, you know, if you make it on any type of... Any type of large publication coming out of out of Atlanta, you doing something? I, I'm yeah, just, facts, I'm facts, not facts, I'm facts. not tapped into it, so you know that kind of surprised me. So I'm just like, that's what I'm saying. Like the, how can I say, the meat and potatoes of mm-hmm. the of the of the culture is you know these niggas are starting to get up and you know they're gonna be up out of here soon. You know what I'm saying? They're not gonna be dropping like how they were like. Think about Future. Yeah, Future dropped that album. He been chilling since then. You see what I'm saying? Like he didn't even drop that much videos from it. Not that like I'm not putting no pressure on because Future and Future gave us a lot. But it's like even with that, like that's a good example because Future pretty much been chilling. He signed he signed like two artists since he dropped that album. 
Mm-hmm. So and I don't, I don't want of course I don't want to sound like that guy, but at the same time too, man, when they revisit this history, at the end of the day, it's all subjective. But man, listen, that was a golden era. I always say for me, it was late nineties, two thousands run was just so ridiculous, man. It was so ridiculous. I mean, you had ev- literally everything. Everybody had their own persona. Everybody had their own stardom power. And it was just good fucking music. I was just looking at that throwback page, and they posted the top 10 hits on this week, 2002. Mm. And that shit just, I mean, you had Ashanti on there. Ashanti and Ja Rule. You had Genuine, Loon, P. Diddy, I Need a Girl. You had music, uh, Half Crazy. Mm. You had Genuine, um, uh, Stingy. Mm. You had, uh, I'm trying to remember that shit. All was, hits. Like, come on, bro. Like, this shit was so crazy. And you know what's crazy? None of that shit sounded like. None, none of that shit sounded, <laughs> none of that shit like, sounded like. the. None of those songs that you named sounded like. Man, I'm just thinking about, damn, that was 21 years ago, my nigga. What In the crazy is you said foolish Ashanti, Ashanti. Uh, f- that's a sample. It is. It is. But now, why somebody is going to come out and sample that shit? Got it? <laughs> it is like, well, you probably got to call Irv to clear that shit, but that's a whole nother story. But uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, man, like, I mean, it's, it's, it's getting thick, man. It's getting thick. And I'm just waiting for them to do that crossover, man. Do that crossover and, and take it on head strong because it's not like it can't be done. You get what I'm saying? No, I get I get what you're saying. It's just I just felt like by now we would have had like that that batch of artists who really like put their hands on this shit. Like, you know, this this is me. Like we got artists who got like that success, but none of them none of them have that like I mean, because I'll be real, Young Boy got like that following, but he yeah, for sure. he don't he's the way he conducts himself as far as like performances, even now due to his like his legal his legal situation, mm-hmm. but it's like even before then, like he wasn't really vocal on on doing shows. Like he did shows, but it wasn't like you know the type of energy that that come around his music. Like he really kind of fall back from that. Like he's been starting to do interviews as of lately, and um, that's good. But it's like. You know, he ain't got no moments where it's like, all right, like young boy killing this shit on a on a grand scale as an artist. Oh, I forgot I about one that got like rapper of the year last year for Complex. Um, not last year, year before. Uh, Tyler. Oh, you can't forget about Tyler. He'll let you know you forgot about him. Tyler creator. But <laughs> even then, when I watch his rap radar interview, though, this nigga is focused on vacationing right now, taking a break. Because you know he he low key tricked niggas with that with that album, the resale. Mm-hmm. That's the album from twenty twenty one. He just added like seven new tracks on that. So shit. it was a deluxe, basically. That's not a whole new album. That's just an add on from um, "Call Me When You Get Lost." Yeah, my thing is I just when it come to Tyler, bro. Tyler kind of focus on shit that don't be mattering when I be hearing them talk sometimes. When I watch that nigga Rap Radar interview, that's the first interview I watch, I watch in depth with Tyler Creator. Bro, that nigga is very how can I say it? Um he stands on everything he says. He that's come true. off as an asshole. Um definitely give off asshole vibes, but you could tell he really cares about his team and his family. But he don't give a fuck about none of that other shit. Mhm. Like, he was even talking about, like, how, oh, you know, they expecting us to care about all this shit. Man, I don't give a... F- how you think about it? I don't give a fuck about that shit. I care about taking care of my family and making sure that we good. I don't care about what's going on in this country and this, that, and that. I don't care about that shit. But when him speaking about music, as of right now, he's just focused on, you know, taking a break. So you give... So he take a break after his best album. So that people might not make... say this is his best album. They, some people might feel like Igor is his best album. That's true. Like I, like you say, this is subjective. But I mean, when well, he got the Grammy for this album, right? I'm not sure. He got a Grammy he off did? this. Yeah, call me when you call me when you get lost. That one of... rap album of the year. It did. I don't know if it was rap album, but him and Drummer got a Grammy. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm saying so. It's like I forgot who got nominated this year. It was like Freddie, Pusha T, 
Him. I think Tyler was nominated for it. He was definitely nominated. I forgot who won though. I had to go. He might have got that. I'm not sure, but I know he got a Grammy. For, he got a Grammy off that album. A lot of people would say he's at the top of the class. As of right now? Mm-hmm. Is it really I'm, debatable? I'm thinking. Uh, <laughs> oh, I no. Mean, Kendrick won. Mr. Morale, big stuff. Okay. I'm trying to think. I mean, who else is there with him? I kind of feel like he's there by default. That's true too, but see, if niggas say that he take that as like you trying to hate on him or shit no, on no, him. No, no, because I mean he makes good music now. Don't get me wrong. I'm not even a big Tyler fan and I'm saying this. He no, makes some good not music. For real. But he I'm saying like music, but you, the field hasn't really been put in out. No yeah, way. the field ain't really up to par like that though. That's, That's what I'm a saying. Fact. It's, it's tough to go up against, you know, when you know niggas used to say it in a song, man. I remember Big Pun said next year he coming home with the Grammy, but he went up against some heavy hitters that year before for the Grammy, man. Think about it. Capital Punishment was 98. You know how much shit came out in 98? Didn't he get five, no shot against him? He got five mics for that album. I, I think he, he did. I think he got five mics for That was a for tough Capital year for yeah. him, though. I'm yeah. just talking about competition-wise. Everybody was heavy hitting that year. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? And you got when, oh, like, 04 to 08, when you got Kanye dropping. 98 was DMX first year, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah then yeah, you yeah. got Volume 2 by Hove. Yeah, he, yeah. That was, that, was so, rough. that was a rough year. Then it's like, you got that 2004 to 2008 time period, Kanye on niggas' head. College dropout, late registration, graduation. He won Best Rap Album for all three of those. College dropout, late registration, and graduation. That's tough sledding. Then Wayne, he came with the Carter 308. It's like, it's it's a lot of shit. So, I mean, even with even for Hove, you know how we always talk about, like, you know, that thing that be going around about uh how Hove was never the best rapper when he was out mm-hmm. for one year when he was out. But it's no slight against him. Some tough, it was some heaters from think, 90, from 96 but, but that, to... But that, that, that adds to, you know, the, the, stand, the standard that was set. The standard, <laughs> That's the yeah. standard that was set. Niggas like, really had to be in the studio we at, working. We look at Ho as the greatest rapper alive, but like, you know, that is kind of true. Like, for a long time, he was Ho, but he wasn't the, we can't say he was the best rapper. The that's only year how, that you could really say is like 01. That's how deep the ocean was back yeah, then. Yeah, but <laughs> even 01, I mean, Eminem was, had the shit in the chokehold. You get what I'm saying? But. From a year, we're talking on a year-to-year basis, they say, like, quote-unquote, he wasn't ever the right, hottest rapper right, at any right. point. But look at his consistency. And look at it. Like you said, the standard that was set. I think that's what pushed rappers, too. Yeah. It was a standard. It was come on, You can't come out bullshit. It's like, oh, shit, man. This nigga is still on the fucking radio, man. This, this nigga still on, on the radio. radio. 2001, you got, you got Jada Kiss still on the radio. You got Ludacris on the radio. Nelly killing niggas on the oh my radio. God. You got motherfucking... Eminem. That's just, my that's, just, that's just East Coast artists. You had Snoop still killing shit. Exhibit was still hot in 2001. Um, all kind of niggas was hot. Like... Uh, I said Snoop already. You had who else, man? JD killing. JD still killing 2000, 2001. Like Bow Wow. Bow Wow was the was the top, like one of the top, like hottest niggas. This is a fact. It just pushed niggas to be. I think that pushed niggas to be better, man. Niggas you, really had to be in the studio you had working. Clips. You had clips coming out. Grinding was like one of the yeah. hottest songs. Grinding was on that top ten, by the way. Yeah. Like two thousand one was a was a crazy year. That's crazy year. Yeah, Beanie Siegel out there. You had you had some real niggas out here, bro. Scarface still doing this thing. 01. one, mm-hmm. the fix. That's probably his best album. That was, that's two thousand one. Like it was a lot of shit. Was Outcast. Like, Outcast. Oh one. <laughs> what we talking that's about? That's on you right there. What we talking about, bro? Like shit was shit was real. Shit was real. Uh, I don't know, man. I I just feel like if you put certain niggas in a certain pool, there's only about three or four of them. Who I could say will probably still hold their own, but some of these things today, man, I don't know if they would have made it, cause they would have been constantly battling with hearing. And I think the internet plays a little bit of part in it because now you don't need a radio station to get your to get your clout, get your following. All that shit that I'm all the words that I'm saying are grouped together. You don't need you don't need a radio station no more. Mm-hmm. You don't need the source. You don't need the you know the Is publications. That and the, uh... I hate to say this because everybody kind of had a low barrier entry, but like literally anybody can can rap now. Like literally anybody. Like even like you say, like with the that added with 
the shit that you don't need to go on a radio press tour. Like you can just upload some shit on your Instagram and the if it right, catch it catch if it catch it catch and you you out of here, you out of here. That's how that's how low the barrier entry is to this shit. And I'm not saying it's wrong with nothing wrong with it because shit. Before Juvenile drop started dropping his albums, he used to work in an electric company. Like he wasn't, you know, he wasn't like a a, a big rapper. And then he gave us 400 degrees. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like he gave us the G code. He gave us Project Endless. He was giving us classic albums. So it's like, you know, shit shit changed, bro. Shit changed a lot. I don't know though, man. But if you had to say like, because we talked about a lot. About like you know what's not moving like if you had to say like some hidden gems like you got any like one or two artists? Like what's what's some shit that you listen to that's that's current now that a lot of people are not listening to? That's a better question. That you feel people should listen to. I honestly can't say. And if I had to, if I had to pick a city that's still showing like them niggas is hungry, it would have to be Detroit. That's true. Detroit niggas, Flint niggas, Detroit niggas and Flint niggas, they, they be showing that they hungry. Them niggas be working. Yeah. But they don't necessarily have the notoriety like, you know. They, I, they, they, they run yeah. in the underground. You know, I fuck with Baby Tron. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a, I became a Baby Tron fan like end of, like towards beginning, early, end of last year. Um, then, of course, you got uh, Babyface Ray, who be killing. Um, you got I'm, PZ, I'm a, you got yeah, PZ. I'm a payroll Giovanni fan, but he kind of like an he he kind of older. OG, he OG status. Yeah, he like an OG status. He like one of the original so, Detroit. Yeah, niggas, like, yeah. But he still be putting out music. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But I mean, as far as the new niggas, honestly, more I can't say, dog. Like my playlist consists of a lot of 2021 and shit back. No, I feel you. And I mean, new niggas, it's kind of bleak. It is. I yeah, like I'm looking at my recently downloaded. I can't, I mean, uh, recently added, and I can't really say. Um, that nigga Stilo was nice. Um, I was in the Simba and DJ Drama. They had an album that came out last year that was pretty cool. Yeah, Results um, Take Time. Res- results Take Time, yep. Results Take Time. That was pretty good. Uh, other than that, I can't really say, honestly, bro. Honestly, Buddy got the Buddy got the potential to be one of those dudes. You think so? Mm-hmm. He definitely got the talent. He got the oh Mozzie, Mozzie, Mozzie had a great album last year. I forgot about Mozzie. Mozzie, he's one of the ones that I could say if he stay consistent, he could be a big name in this shit. Yeah, I mean he got he already got a large following. And I think I think because rap is where it's at now, that's leaving the door open for this other conversation that I still believe that's false about female rappers running the rap game, and I don't believe that's what's going on. Because in order to run the rap game, a lot of factors go into that shit. And the numbers don't be matching. All right. Let's that's get into it then. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, that's that's the theme right now is that female... And I think because we see these viral videos of them, you know, putting out songs and shit and doing all that, that means that they're running it. I can't necessarily say that. I just feel like they... they you can say they're working more. Yeah, they're working more. You can say that. Uh, and nothing else is when really. I, when you say nothing, running, when you say running, how they run in the rap game? But at the same time, y'all telling me nobody been number one this year. That's what I'm saying. So you can't. <laughs> okay, see, let's see. You can't run the rap game, and this none of y'all not have a number one song. And we in a slump. We in a slump. So female rappers was running the rap game. Why none of them got a number one rap song on the Billboard? Mind you now, no rap song or album has been is currently number one since 1993, but female, females are running the rap game? That don't make sense. I'm just asking fair questions If here. the shit viral, that's cool, but I think we we mistaken viral for long-standing success. Because, all right, like if you look at a lot of the female rappers, they have a lot of viral moments. It's a lot of viral moments, but you can't tell me they running this shit. No. And this this apply to the male rappers too. I'm not singling y'all out because we all in this together at the end of the day. How are they running this shit? Y'all telling me this day this is this is the year, but also in the same year, ain't nobody from rap had number one at all. So who's really running this shit? It would have to be a without a doubt. Like when I think of running, I'm thinking about when as a collective, like yeah. all y'all killing this shit. All y'all got. You can all say all that, y'all charting. All y'all doing something. Yeah, there was a time with certain rappers they was running the shit. 
when whole when 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 Wayne was running this shit, mm-hmm. that's running quote unquote running this shit. And it's a wave of niggas like like I was naming earlier, Hove, Eminem. Uh, it was a wave. Dr. Dre was still two thousand one. The Nelly. killer shit, Nelly. Yeah. that's a wave of niggas killing shit. Oh one, so it's like you know, now, I don't know, man. Uh-uh. You can't be running them. We don't got no number one song. That commercial, that commercial says do play a part. It, it, it matters. Matter. It do matter. Not when y'all telling me a, a certain group within the group running shit. Then a female rapper that has had her stamp on the game for a couple years now, she just came out and said she's taking a break until she get back mentally right. So you kind of, we kind of starving that ass. But I'm talking about Meg. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So Meg has t- taken a step back. We ain't getting no music from her for until she feel like she back in her, she in, back in her right mental. Last year. Yeah. And this, of course... And I get it. She had a lot yeah, going on mm-hmm. with the Tory Lanez case and everything like that. Understandable. And then, you know, Nikki, she doing her thing, but she didn't crack number one. Mm-hmm. Ice Spice, she doing her thing. She ain't cracking number one spot. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Even though they had put out some heaters, but... It ain't... It ain't she, yeah. she's, still, she's still trying to make her way. Yeah. I think she said her album's coming in October, though. But ain't Nikki shit coming this year, too? No, Nikki album's coming in October. Nikki, okay. That's what I'm talking All about. Right. Yeah. So I don't know, man. It's it's I, I just found that interesting though. I think I, I think people are saying that because of the lack of the damn, like what the we ain't really ain't shit really popping. What's the song of the summer? Pound town. <laughs> that shit is bad, man. I ain't even gonna hold you, dog. That shit is horrible, man. Pound town song of the summer, man. That shit horrible. Nigga still man. I'm gonna I'm gonna be real with you, bro. And this is me from being out, you know, out and about or whatnot. Like when I'm out, it ain't no, I, it ain't no shit currently. Um, niggas is playing, niggas still playing Free Minds by Tim's and <laughs> shit like that. Like niggas still want that type of, you know, some shit. And that's that almost just, two years old. That's almost two years old. Like niggas still playing shit like that. Like in that wave, niggas still playing like the Burner Boy type shit or whatnot. Like I don't, I don't hear a lot of like current shit like that. Um, I do hear, I do hear the Dirk. I, do, I hear that Dirk song a lot. I can't cap. I hear the Dirk song, the Dirk and Cole. Um, I don't know though, man. Like it still goes, it still goes to like you know, the year just not being like you know like that. It's not a big year. Not a big year at all, man. I don't know what niggas got to do. I've been appreciating a lot of a lot of underground artists, a lot of people who don't get the notoriety. I listen to uh, I listen to a lot of Hit Boy. He just dropped an album with his with his pops. His pops came home. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to listen. To I've, been, that. I've been I've been I've been I've been tapped in with a lot of that. I've been liking the the production. Hit Boy, one of my favorite producers, so he already got me with that. And his pops actually can rap, so I've been listening to that. Uh, like you said, I still I'm still heavy on the Detroit shit. I'm listening to a lot of Paco Panama. That's a nigga out of out of DC. You on that trap wave? Other than that, man, I don't really don't listen to a lot of new niggas though. I always kind of keep it like that because I don't know. I feel like a lot of the new dudes just don't catch me like that. I have listened to that Gunna album a lot though since it came out though. Yeah, yeah, I was about to transition into that. So, you know, Gunna Gunna dropped his album. You know, off the heels of him dropping uh, Bread and Butter, mm-hmm. and I gotta salute him, man. The album fire. The album is fire, man. <laughs> it flows. It flows together very well. Um, I could tell that he took his time with it. He had some shit to say, but at the same time, too, he had the you know the hitters on there and shit like that. But right, I mean, salute the Gunner, man. This is a very good project, and I'm not really a Gunner fan like that. You know what I'm saying? But I think part of the reason why I gave it an ear is because the lack of, mm-hmm. you know. Part of it, so I mean, I guess it was a blessing in disguise. Niggas, niggas was looking real funny Friday night. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, but Gunner, man, I mean, salute to him, man. Salute to him, man. Album fire. Um, standout tracks of me. Um, I was just thinking that was my shit. I like that payback. Man, that 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 shit ain't got no skips. Honestly, I've been listening yeah, no, to that. It's whole, a very smooth album. I've been listening to it like front and back. Like um, back I mean. at it, back to the moon. Right. Um, cash shit. Cash shit. Born rich is the one. Born rich is the one. Turns your back. One. Mm-hmm. And I was just thinking, Fuck all you right. Mean. And it's a good, it's a good track though. It's 15 tracks. Yeah. And, and you that's know that's, just that's, my, that's my window, that 12 to 15 window. So yeah, I fuck with it, man. That's salute, just sliding. Salute the that's just sliding. Um I don't know, man. Um 
You want to get into the politics that came into this album? Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, I know, come with it because, I mean, at the end of the day, of course, that has been a continuous topic. I feel like it's still going to be a continuous topic about, you know, niggas saying, oh, at the end of the day, this be, this internet niggas, I feel like at the end of the day. Um, That's true. There has been some street niggas who has spoken on this, and I understand both sides. You both sides got to understand both sides though. It's gonna be some internet niggas who don't subscribe to the lifestyle. Hey, I just listen to the music. I don't give a fuck about what he got going on. Mm-hmm. And then you got the street niggas who like they live by that code. They live by that life. So I can understand them not listening to his music. That's what it is. But as far as the politics surrounding it, I'm pretty sure his record label don't give a fuck about none of that shit. They still got a release. Um, I did see the post about the barcode. I mean, the QR code that was going around that everybody was posting. You know, right when he dropped, apparently it's a countdown for something. I'm not sure what it is. No, it's Thug. It's Thug shit. Thug oh. and Metro Boomin got something called Business is Business is about to come out. Okay. That's what the countdown was for. And I found it, you know, kind of interesting. Because he dropped, he dropped, Thug dropped that barcode the same night the album came out. Okay. And that's why everybody was sharing that and not sharing the Gunner album. And then even Gunner shared it. I don't I don't know how to look at that. Me neither. I don't know how to look at that. I think it I don't think it would ever be a time where if I don't see young Doug doing that if he's home. Not on Gunner's release day. Dropping his own shit? No. Not as promo. Hell no. <laughs> no, I don't see that either. I don't see that. Yeah, you got all like five of the artists who put the QR code in their shit too. There's a lot of niggas sharing that shit. So I don't know how to look at it, man. One can say, I don't know. When I saw Gunner share it, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> What's going on now? <laughs> could it be like one of those, like, I'm just speaking, I'd be in devil's advocate. It could be Gunner, like, hey, man, like, I still fuck with you type shit. I mean, if you listen to the album, gonna say I still fuck with bro. Like he's still that's the that's the message that I got. I still fuck with bro, but it's like you know shit going on. Like we got. I would shit assume I, I I followed Thug on social media for most of his career. Anybody he's associated with, he mm-hmm. shares their album. No, that's that's a fact. That's a fact. For him not to do that this time and drop a promo for his shit, to me that says something. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not saying he's saying fuck, but I'm just going off a pattern here. I'm just confused, though, because before this even came out, he still he he shared, he had to link the bread and butter in his bio. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. It's weird. It's just weird. It's, it's a weird. lot of weird shit it's going on. a lot on. of weird shit. And the on. niggas who were sharing the QR code didn't share gunner shit. G Herbo shared. A lot of niggas were sharing that shit. So a lot of niggas was sharing that QR code, but they wasn't sharing... Gunner's album. Now, what if this is Smoke and Mirrors? What if it's some collab song with Gunner and Thug? A lot of niggas will be looking stupid as hell. A lot of niggas will be looking stupid as hell. The Metro and Thug shit could be bait to get people all riled up and then boom. That's a when fact. That, when it's, a, it's a collaboration song with Thug and Gunner. Then what? Then what? Now, that will be telling. That's going to start a new discourse for real, for real. Especially amongst the music industry. Mm-hmm. And like I said, the only one I think that's going to stay on they square is Boosie, but that's a whole nother conversation. Boosie got his own issues that he yeah, got He got some on. own issues. But I, I, with the politics that's around this gunner shit, hey, man, listen. At the end of the day, it's all about the music for a lot of niggas. I think for most of his fan base, it's about the music. Majority of Gunner's fan base is not subscribing to street rules, street codes, street lifestyle. They shit. don't give a fuck about that shit. So I think he'll be all right. And I think he could probably do a tour off this album, to be real. Oh, he's going to get some tour money. I mean, he's going to have to. That nigga y'all, lost a lot of fucking got, bread. Y'all got this shit fucked up. Y'all think it's going to anybody go get that tour money after he get locked up right before he go on tour for Drip Season Forever and he lose out on that tour money? He going to get some tour shit, money he might combine this. it too. He going to have to. That, that show going to be crazy because he going to be doing Drip Season Forever shit and he going to be doing this shit. That shit going to go crazy, bro. Fuck around, I might go to that shit. <laughs> Straight up. I mean, I can. I, one, I, I, one thing I will say, I get gonna props for more than anything is delivering this album off the heels of all that shit he had going on. A lot of artists probably could have folded or, mm-hmm. you know, just said, I just want to, I need to put some shit out to get some money. But I could tell by listening to this no, album. He, he put this album he really, he really sat with this and he, he went through the process. He didn't rush it. 
this don't sound like an album that was rushed or that he was like, man, I'm gonna hurry and put something out so I get some on, some of my money back. Nah, nah it's, it's, this it's some artistry like in this. It's some artistry in yeah, there. Yeah, so he salute to him for doing this thing. But all the politics aside, man, a lot of shit fake at the end of the day, man. Very fake. But I'm telling you, man, my theory is, and I could be wrong, but I think it might be some smoke and mirrors for a collab record. And if it's a collab record <laughs> between Thug and Gunna. A lot of niggas got to answer oh, some questions. Oh, yeah, man. It's going to be a lot of heel turning. It's going to be some heel turning. A lot of y'all got to answer some questions, man. And like I said, I, I still want to listen to the album more. But, you know, just our first listen, man, this is very, very good, man. Very, I have a lot. I listened good. to this album like at least three times already. Yeah, I listened to it about three times already. Did the car test, of course, but yeah. Car, it, it, it passed the car test. Yeah. It passed the car test. Yeah, it, pa- it passed. It passed the. Uh, it passed the speaker in the house test. <laughs> yeah, man, he's doing the same. Man, I can't even be mad at Gunner, man. Um, hey, all I got to say is, man, if that shit is a collab, I'll say this <laughs> one more time. If that shit is a collab record, some some questions got to get answered, man. But you saying it's supposed to be a thug in Metro? That's how they. That's how they putting it out now. We don't know what's going to happen okay. on there. We don't know. That's that's the rumor basically. Mm-hmm. But all I know, all I seen was a countdown. I don't know what the countdown is for. But then I seen somebody say something about Thug's sister about um you know, was she listening to the album or anything like that or something? She said something. I wasn't too sure, but we know she not listening to the album. I don't know. We know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm listening to the album. I'm a fan. That's all that matters. I think this has been, and he's already been locked up for more than a year, man. I think it's time to pack this shit up, to be honest with you. I don't know how much longer this case is going to go on. That shit might be a minute. You got to think, YNW Melly just not getting his trial. He been in jail about two, three years before he get his trial. But see, Thug trial is under, like, it's underway. That's my thing. Mm-hmm. Like, Tax Tone gets sentenced tomorrow. He gets sentenced tomorrow? He gets sentenced tomorrow. He did, he tweeted that earlier today. He gets sentenced tomorrow. What you think about that? I think he gets more than 10, less than 20. You think so? X X con? I don't know, Mo. If he do that, he got hella hella good lawyers. From what I've been hearing, he got he got hella good lawyers. And you gotta think he's been in jail for almost six, six seven years now. Yo, if he get less than 20 plus time served, he'll be home in like... He'll be home in like four years. Four or five years. Still can run the podcast shit up. He definitely can. He will. But that means he can't have no more slip-ups, bro. He got to he gotta, he gotta, he gotta be... Like home. legit, no more slip-ups. He got to be on some academics. So he got be, to be at home. Like, just be at home. That's it. He can't own not no weapon. They on top of his ass. He can't do nothing. Oh, if if it's a weapon around him, it got to be security. But if he come back, bro, he about to wreck the podcast game. He gonna wreck the podcast game, bro. That shit he, gonna be crazy. He gonna be back at number one, number two, easily, easily. Just, just imagine the discourse that's gonna happen when he come home. Oh with my them, god, with them, with them, with them list. He gonna have to be and listen. If he come back with a that banger, list, that list was the worst. The thing first year, the first year he come back, he cracking the top five. That list was kind of like I don't like how they did that list, Mike. I mean, I say what we was talking about, but I don't like how they did that shit because that list low key pit people against each other. It should have been people, like that. I think they people pit them against each other because we do this for any other genre. We do this for any other genre. I I think it's dope. I think it's dope to do a, no, a hip hop right. media personality list. I just I think didn't it's like dope. it because like it's like we didn't spend enough time talking about the collective of like the. It's because for what it's worth, a lot of them doing great things. We ain't talking Facts. about the we ain't talking about the collective. We just talk about the beef, yeah, the, yeah. the spill out from it. The and spill it was, out from it, it. That wasn't fair to that us. That was bro. a great list, though. It, it was, was a great. No, it was a hell of a good list. You know what I'm saying? A lot of a lot of them dudes. They had they yeah. they list. They they rightful spot. You know what I'm saying? And they the was women doing their thing. Angie Martinez. Um, I just feel like uh, I think the first year tax comeback though, like it's gonna be crazy. Yeah. It's crazy, but he's always felt he's always tweeted and that he's been in good spirits, bro. So he knows something we don't. So you get sentenced tomorrow, then, huh? Mm-hmm. I mean, we'll definitely see, man. I'll be shocked if he gets under twenty, though. I think, and he's already been in jail since twenty. He's already been in jail seven years. Well, well seventeen, like- eighteen, nineteen, twenty-two, one, two, two, twenty-three, six years. 
What would it be like time served? Like all together, you get 10 years time served. And then he'll be home in what? Probably next year. Three years, two years, yeah. He in county, he ain't in federal now. He in county, so he probably come home now. I don't know, man. Be, <laughs> that'd be very crazy. Hey, man. Who knows? Because he got found guilty of... Should Troy ever go to jail? Yeah, what did he get found? He got found guilty of them charges, though, with right? That thing was gun possession. The manslaughter? Mm, yeah, that's what it was. Let me see. I, I want to make I sure think, I'm But I think it was the though. gun possession because that's why he testified in the first place. He testified to get his 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 punishment. I'm reduced. talking about tax. Oh, okay. Let me see. So he he yeah, he got found guilty of manslaughter. That's what I'm saying. So manslaughter ain't like that ain't no murder. that ain't yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, he got found guilty of first degree manslaughter manslaughter. He was also found guilty on two counts of criminal possession of a weapon in the second degree, two counts of assault in the first degree, and one count of assault in the second degree. Hmm. Yeah, he might have to some time. Yeah, he got some time. That's tough. Yeah. I got to look at what what this first degree manslaughter uh, carry. Hmm. Mm, Four to 15 years of prison. That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That come down to how the judge want to give it to you. Let me see. Let me see. First degree. Yeah, it, it, it's tough sledding, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how. We'll see tomorrow, though. That's all I can say. I didn't even know that. We'll see how that plays out tomorrow, though. But if he, if, I would love to see Tax back on the on the mic, man. Like I said, he one of the top two niggas in the game to me. Who does he even interview the first time he come back? I honestly feel like, well, he was doing a lot of solo episodes. That's that's the thing that stood out for Tax. Yeah, he he was didn't a need great a guest. Soul, yeah, he didn't need he a guest. He didn't need a guest. So it's like a guest was a bonus. His like, voice alone carried. That's what I'm saying. Shit. Like just just the, just the way he and he was on show. his way to multi millions. Yeah, that's easy. the thing. But the crazy thing is, though, no, when he come back, he gets he could touch that automatically. Mm hmm. Easy. His audience is gonna go up crazy when he get back. Twelve p.m. Wednesdays. It's gonna hit different. Tough Wednesday. That shit gonna hit different, bro. When he come back, it's gonna be good to see him back, though, man. I, I'm not even gonna hold you. Like the podcast game has missed tax. It has. He he provided a different element, a different sound, a different voice, um, wittiness, just charisma, character, um, the original stories, all that shit, man. Like he's he's needed. He's a he's a he's a like a. Like low key, he is a founding father. This shit, bro. To be real, in the, in the urban market, yes, yeah, for sure. definitely. Mm-hmm. Especially in black culture, bro. Then who's to say what he'll get outside of his podcasting? Hey man, it'd be dope. To hey, see the nigga though, was bro. chilling with Jay Z before he got locked up, man. That's all I can really say. Like the nigga was on, he was on his way to some shit. Oh yeah, he definitely was on some way to shit. He was, he was supposed to be. Uh, like I said, he's supposed to be on Everyday Struggle. It was supposed to be him. It was supposed to be him. That's the only reason why Joe started doing interviews for that shit. Initially, it was supposed to be him and Tax. Mm-hmm. That would have been f- dope. That don't take nothing away from academics because academics did a great job he on did, that show. They, they, they played their part. Yeah, I definitely won't take that away from Act. Act was able to do his thing on there and continue to build at his own following and shit like that. But I'd be a liar to say if the podcast game wouldn't want Tax Tone back, bro. That's just a lie. Like, I mean, so his for name, his who, name still, yeah. his name still going. So, like, yeah, definitely something. for niggas who who been doing this shit for going on seven years now. Like, he one of them ones that we used to listen to before we started doing this shit. So, for him to be back, that'd definitely be dope, man. Definitely be dope. But I'd be interested to see how that plays out. But with this gunner shit. Mm-hmm. Niggas we have to be honest about this gun and shit, man. If bro, I, if bro, if bro keep on this trajectory, like y'all gonna have to eventually, like you shit, know, it don't seem like he lost no momentum neither. He ain't lost no momentum, and I'm gonna be real with you, like if we doing like the comparison, like him. If we gonna put Gunner up against a lot of niggas in his class, his discographies might be better than them boys. Better than little baby. Better than this little baby albums. That's a fact. 
You gotta think Gunner. Niggas already, love my turn now. You gotta think Gunner Gunner or Gunner might have two classics on his belt already. You think he got an album better than my turn? Yes. Jim Drip Season 3 is way better than that. That shit ain't got no skips. I don't know because I don't really listen to Gunner like that. I'm acting. Drip or, uh, what, what is the what's the other one? Drip or Drown when he on the water? That's a classic. That shit ain't that's a bro. Gunner discography better than a lot of these boys' discographies, bro. Definitely better than Dirk one. Yeah, I'm not really a Dirk fan, so I can't even. Yeah, just being real. Because little baby fans definitely was on the TL, man. So that was funny though. I fuck with little baby. Yeah, but it's like I mean, I got we got to be honest at the same time. It's just facts. Little baby is nice though. I can't even. No, he's nice. Even nice as hell. There are some people who feel like Gunner ain't better than him. Then of course you got Gunner fans who feel like he is better, but. I remember when my turn came out though, so that's no, why I was turn, asking. My turn hit hard. My turn hit hard, and niggas are saying that's a classic. It is. I wouldn't argue that. So that's what I'm saying. If Gunna got something better than my turn, then hey, cool. That's what's up. I'm definitely waiting. Shit, for- their album together was hard as hell. Yeah, it was. That had uh, a. Dri- don't drip too hard. Yeah, drip too hard. That had uh, a couple more songs what on there. Was that? That was 18. That's 2018. Five years ago. Mm mm mm. What a time, bro. I can't believe that was five years ago. That's crazy. That shit wild. So, uh, how you feel about uh, Gunplay getting mad at people for refunding they uh, GoFundMe for his daughter's <laughs> for his daughter's uh, medical? You know, I issues. didn't know you can refund off GoFundMe. I didn't know you can refund on GoFundMe neither. That's kind of fire. <laughs> but they kind of do got a they got a point. They got a point. I can't they even. Got a point. You can't. And it's and it's about the optics at the end of the day. Like yeah. regardless of. The timing and the optics. The timing is bad, and Granted, the optics so, is bad. Granted, so he's saying his girl was the one who did the GoFundMe, but my nigga, like, if people see you buying a, a, see you a, buying your a watch a for Ross, but then they trying to say, well, we don't know how he got the chain because you know, for for this worth, a lot of them do get free jury. That's cool, for plugging jury. But it's the optics. It's the optics at the end of the day, bro. Like, nigga, you, y'all, y'all both have spoken out about how your daughter is going through a medical situation. We're not taking nothing from that, but the optics of it just look kind of nasty to the people who donate to you. Mm-hmm. You just gotta, you just gotta eat that. That come with that. That's just what it is. <laughs> if I see you giving, uh, if I see you giving a bust down watch like that to your homie, after, off the heels of that, I would feel some type of way too. Yeah. And the people who donated, they have a point, bro. They do have a point, bro. Like, my nigga, like, just last week, we, you was about to smack DJ Envy for talking about this shit a certain way. But so that now, means that hell weight. They that hell weight. That's serious. Which it is. It is. It is. Yeah, it is. That's your child. Like, it's your baby at that. But then you, the next week, you, <laughs> you know, you gifting this man a chain. It's like, dog, like, shit real out here. Niggas ain't about to play with their bread, bro. For, so, niggas that donate to you because of this situation... Especially when it comes to kids. Especially with the kids, it's mm-hmm. like, bro, that shit hit different. <coughs> Excuse me, but yeah, I don't know, man. He he got to accept that. <laughs> he got to accept that. Like that's all I can really say. He he really got to hold that. He got to hold that one, man. <laughs> I don't even know which more he can say about it. To be he hell for that, honestly. Because why would you even do that? Like I feel like my awareness for the kid, then, but you know what? I don't get this nigga this chain and make a post about it while. We still collecting GoFundMe funds right now. It's the, like, that's what I'm saying. It's the optics, <laughs> it's just man. Like, it's bro, the like, timing. It's the optics. People are going to look at that a type of way. Like, do it in private, my nigga. Don't I'm, even post that I'm, shit. I'm the type of person, if I was giving somebody a gift like that, I'm not going... Why would I need to record that and all this other shit? Like, you know? that just Awareness make... wasn't on 10 for that one. No, nah, it wasn't at all. Awareness wasn't on he 10 gotta for that He got to accept one. that. He got to accept that. That's just what it is. That video that he put out was crazy though. He said, "All oh, y'all who refunded <laughs> that fucking cash, or you didn't give it from your heart anyway. <laughs> you a piece of shit, and you going to hell." Oh my god, damn, bro! I didn't watch it, but that's all crazy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you didn't give it yeah. from your heart. <laughs> you didn't give it from your heart anyway, bro. Nah, we gave it from our heart, but you ain't, you ain't, <laughs> you want some other shit. This shit is fucked up, but I mean, all in all, though, like I do hope. His daughter is uh, in good spirits. She's in good health more than anything. 
But you got to judge that accordingly next time, bro. It is a next time. I mean, you got to understand for both sides. People do have a reason, especially if it's hard-earned money. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. And they know your daughter going to do something. But it's just the optics. It's, it's the optics more than anything. It's more than optics. It's more than optics. You got to accept that one. And a lot That's of people just... are going to get that refund, too, by the way. They are. And like you said, I didn't even know. I did some research on that shit too. I'm like, yeah, I think they give you up to like 60, 90 days to request. Oh, a that's refund. crazy. <laughs> that's some shit like that. Damn. Yeah, he, they might deplete that whole little thing. Honestly. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it it all boils down to, uh, hey, times is hard, bro. Times is hard for niggas, man. So if somebody's lending you some money, man. Don't take that shit for granted. That shit means something. It do. I mean, I t it's no different from somebody who you lend somebody some money, then you see them on the gram or you see them on Facebook or on Twitter and they buying up some shit. Well, oh, nigga, I just lent you some money. Like, what's up? <laughs> you around here watch bags, you in Foot Locker, Champs, whatever the case may be. I'm just you, you, in the, you in the club throwing it up? Like, nigga, what? Nigga, you in a strip club? Going dummy in the strip club. But you just need it. He got it, brother. Yeah, that shit wild, bro. That shit wild. <laughs> I understand it with some of these niggas, man, but niggas fucked up out here. Speaking of, Russell Simmons is obviously fucked up because he got some <laughs> shit going on, man. Um, I'm not a fan of family business getting right, put out on right. the internet. Yeah, if y'all listen to this show, you a fan of this show. You know, we spoken on that before, and that was just nasty. I, I'm not a fan of Kamora Lee Simmons putting that shit out there. With, that was a daughter. That wasn't Kamora. She posted on her story. Oh, Kamora did. Yeah, she posted on her story. Mm. So it was kind of like a tag team type shit, and mm. we yeah, haven't even like, we have like we haven't even heard from Russell Simmons. I haven't heard from Russell Simmons in years. Is he no, even in this country? No, he he's just in New York. He back. He back. He's, in, he's back now. He's been he's been back. He's been more active, like posting that he's in the states like this year. Cause it, he's been he's been running around with the Mayor Adams dude up there. Okay, well, I tell y'all this. If I had the video, if the video had audio, I definitely would play that it shit because audio. it looked crazy. Yeah, that nigga Russell Simmons' face had looked crazy. And if you could read lips well, then when that man said, I'm broke, she took everything. I was like, God damn. Russell Simmons is broke? I don't believe that shit. But then again, you never know. You never know what's going on, bro, but... I didn't really deep dive into the whole situation, but just to see that circulating, that just goes back to family business being put out on social media, and I will never be for that. Mm -hmm. Never. Never be for that. We all know Russell Simmons has some outside shit going on. You know, he should be held accountable for that if it's true, if it was proven to be true or whatever the case may be. But at the same time, I'm not about to cape for this man. A nigga had a tweet today. They got his ass about here. Oh, if Russell Simmons is broke, it's on yeah, us it's as a culture. To, help to, get, him it's back to right. get him back right. He's done so much. For the nigga, no, nigga. Shut your mouth, nigga. No. If you want to hold this dick, that's fine. The nigga, but. the nigga that made rush cards broke. <laughs> I'm about to say that. the nigga who made the rush card is broke. No, who way. made global grind? No, <laughs> no way, no way. And that's not my job. Uh, Twitter you better man, holler at Rev. You better. <laughs> He better holler at Rev or Rick Rubin. One of them niggas got him. I don't know, man. That shit was nasty. What you about to say, Drew? <laughs> I was just about to say the nigga got them rush cards. Them shit ain't paying enough. Shit was a flop, must be. <laughs> them shit mega flop. Them shit super flop. Jesus Christ, boy. They damn painted that damn life. On the commercials, they had the wife, they had the young daughter. Get paid two days early with you know the rush I'm card. Saying? Like, no overdraft fees. I wonder what the I wonder what the payback what is on that shit with the rush cards. I never thought about that shit. But see, that's that just goes to my point that I made a little earlier this week, mm -hmm. and just off of just life shit. The the perception of the eye is always, you know, it's a tricky slope. There, it is tricky. Sometimes it's reality for a lot Facts. of people. Mm -hmm. Facts. Like it, it depended, like uh, how we we just talking about with gunplay with the optics. Well, somebody's perception is, well, they see you giving Rick Ross a watch. Yeah. You don't need no go yeah, you was never, money. You was never fucked up. Sometimes perception is reality for people. Yeah. And that's, that's a tricky. killer. That's yeah. a killer right there. And I mean, just to endure shit like that, bro, it's, it's, a, it's a nasty game. That's a nasty individual that wants to put on a persona of something that's not just for likes or just for the comments or just for... For people that think this is what you really have going on, when deep down inside it's not that at all. At all, it's it. The shit is cap. 
You know? This shit is really cap. This capped. shit is cap. This shit be cap. This man. shit is nasty. This shit be capped, so, man. you know, for us, you know, bruv, I, I hope it's not like that. But for people to say we need to band together, my nigga, no. I'm sorry. Not sorry, but I don't have nothing for Russell. The money that he need, we couldn't even nah to get him back. Right, he's a multi million. He was a multi millionaire. So imagine, type nigga, his, like, imagine his expenses. I was gonna say, like y'all gotta think before y'all start. These niggas have upkeep to maintain. It ain't even about the bread. Mm-hmm. That's why. They, that's why you always hear people say it's not about how much you make; it's how much you keep. Mm-hmm. It ain't about <laughs> At some point When you getting money It's not about How much you're making no more How much of this shit Am I keeping in my pocket Because it's upkeep That come with that type of shit When you got them lifestyle Just to maintain Rick Ross house A month That shit like Almost 20k Come on now hmm. Just to maintain it That's a month That's That's Utilities Making sure he keep Upkeeping the house You know to make sure It's maintaining property value Almost twenty k a month. Yeah. My nigga, you gonna have to move into a a, a studio for <laughs> us to help you talk. <laughs> like so for real, he, for us to help Russ, he have to he'd have to completely downgrade his lifestyle on some shit. Like nigga, you, you getting it where you live yeah, right niggas, now, nigga. Niggas get t- you don't got no level. high ceilings no more, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Your ceilings don't. You can't look it up. Like nah, nigga. <laughs> that palm- palmetto bug is flying in your house, nigga. <laughs> That shit is in here, nigga. Get it together, Russ. <laughs> yeah, but the daughter was basically saying like how he be talking like real crazy, verbally abusive, all that type of shit. That's why she can't talk to him. But keep that shit off the internet, man. Just please keep that shit off the internet. But Russell Simmons, like, ain't nothing really much I can say about dog. Yeah, they made this the point. Like, yeah, he started dating the mom at like a as a senior, a sophomore in high school or some shit. I don't remember hearing about I that. I think she was a senior. Or something like mm-hmm. that. Like she, she was, was a, young. She was yeah, young. Yeah, she was young. So he was already like in his forties, damn near. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, it's you know, niggas are screaming pedophile and all this other shit. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. I don't know that part. But I just only can see like. I remember this, they had an age gap, but I didn't. No, they got a they got an age gap. Like I almost, didn't, I at didn't least know twenty years. Nothing, yeah, I didn't think it was nothing that crazy. I remember when they did MTV Cribs together. I remember that. That was like that was like two thousand two thousand one. You know when it was? It was before the Trade Centers got hit. Mm-hmm. Because they had a view of the World Trade Centers from their crib. Like, literally walked outside and looked up, and the child was like... Right. Literally, like, a block away, two blocks away. That's crazy. Yup. So, I remember that episode. That's crazy. Mm, mm, mm. Damn, Russell. Fat Farm. Mm. Well, you know Fat Farm jackets went crazy in... Went crazy in the hood for the girls. Russ, Russ was Def Jam, Def Comedy Jam. Hey, man. Fat Farm, Baby Fat. Hey, man, I was watching. Uh... Yeah, he's 65, she's 48. Mm. 17. So 17 years. <laughs> she's 48? Yeah, she's he's 45. Yeah. Yeah, 17 years. That's crazy. Nasty, nigga. That's crazy. All right, man. That's crazy. Yeah, that's some... That's some and, uh, I don't know. But they got two... <laughs> that's tough, bro. That's a... That's, what, that's they got tough. like three... They got like three dollars together? Yeah, two something or? like that, I don't that, know how many bro. kids they got together. I thought they got that... Uh, one daughter's like 20 or some shit mm-hmm. like that. That's the first one. Yeah. After that, I don't know. I think it's like two of them. I might be wrong. It might be three. You never know. The Sim- yeah. I don't know. So has the Simmons family kind of just like low key just not been what we thought they were all these years? I mean, I think I think Rev's still I think straight. Rev's straight. I okay. think Rev. This is just a. I think this is an isolated yeah, situation. Yeah, this is with Russell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I you don't you had to think I never hear nothing about hear Rev. Nothing about Rev. About and him. he done yeah. had a reality TV show. I think he's really the only one. Who he had a got reality in, and, he, and, it, and it made sense for him to go ahead and and, and he never had no controversy surrounding him ever. Like you Rev think, is the only one who went in, got out, and you had to think even even them as a whole family don't be they don't have nah, no nah they no whole, real, yeah his family don't be having no wild shit going on. Now the boy that was like what 2012, 2011, he was moving kind of reckless. Yeah, it was one of them. Jojo, Jojo he was moving a little reckless, guess, but yeah. that's it. Yeah. 
Yeah, Jojo been on a couple of reality TV shows showing his ass, but uh, other I'm than that, about the shit. remember he got jacked up on the yes. IG. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was like one of the first like IG moments. Like, thirteen. That, that was like thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, <laughs> he got jacked up. Dude's like, I apologize on, to the camera. I seen him on a podcast interview recently too. Yeah, I saw that. But um, yeah, Rev ain't never really had nothing going on. Rev, his, his wife, his wife be ducked Chilling. off. All them ducked off. The last mm-hmm. time I seen them like. Was when Rev had the had his show going on, which was a funny show, by the way. No, I fuck, I fuck with Runs I fuck with Runs House. Like that Runs was House. that was a funny show, but Rev just be chilling. I don't think he gonna get himself involved in this though. No, I wouldn't. It Even if it no is sense. his brother, yeah, I wouldn't get in that shit. Be on that Blackberry, you got you got them now. He on that he on that Blackberry <laughs> sending tweets out, <laughs> sending them crazy <laughs> tweets, nigga. You guys need to fall back from my brother. All right. <laughs> Uh, uh, twenty four carat tub with the uh, twenty four carat rough Rev is kicking his shit low key. Yeah, we even pay attention. My dog's on the black. I don't think yeah, Rev. I don't think Rev hurting for no bread. Nah, yeah. Rev good man. I and mean, that's good though. We want to see our rappers and our uh, pioneers age gracefully, have a good time. Nah, for sure. And I mean, ultimately, like that shouldn't call on the people. We shouldn't call on the people for this nigga acting wild, bro. Get a you know union. What I'm saying like. <laughs> How about your people? Get a union. Man. That's what uh that's kind of what LL Cool J was um that's what he's doing right now with Rod the Bells. He like that's more so like he's trying to start a union for you know like the OGs and whatnot. That's why he take a lot of them on tour with him. Okay. When he that's like a festival, like a moving festival. Yeah. So but that's what you want to do. Like I said, start a union, bro. I mean it starts there, but cause then y'all niggas would be shitting on the shitting on niggas. You're like, oh y'all broke niggas. Nigga, I just that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what That's I'm saying? why like, Gunplay got to take that because Gunplay is going to rap pretty soon. I, I'm balling on niggas or something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Balling on niggas. All right. It's tough to take those lyrics out once you <laughs> <laughs> once, you, saw, once you, you built your career on shitting on Stunting. niggas. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Stunting Stunting shit on it's niggas. Coming, it's what coming. you really got to tell us now, my yeah. boy? <laughs> what you really got to tell us? Oh man, these niggas funny, man. <laughs> you niggas funny, bro. It's tough, man. <laughs> he cut his power, man. He cut his hair. That's what. You know, that's that's, what yeah, that's probably what happened. I did see a picture. He got waves now, right? Yeah, he, mm-hmm. got, he got he got a little shortcut. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, don't want to switch it up. He might grow it back. He better do something. Oh, Hopefully, he sell his hair. You know, somebody buy it. That's maybe. crazy. If he sells that's his crazy. Hair. That's crazy if he sells hair, bro. I know he got it in the bag somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> Drew, you know what's so crazy, man, that you got locks just real quick. So I had seen this uh, this real, this girl, she was cleaning somebody's locks. Some shits have been dirty for a minute. Mm. So she ended up cutting them off. But what she did, she separated his hair first. Yeah, and she put them like back different on. Spots. Yeah, she put them like in little puffs or whatever. And she took the locks, she put them in the sink, she was cleaning them. She cleaned them. She was, I never seen no shit like this before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she went back and she actually... She had all the lemon mm-hmm. and all that shit in there. All, the le- all that yeah. shit. Mm-hmm. And then she went back, she took each one, and she basically like mm-hmm. put yeah, it back on did. the spots mm-hmm. that she had separated. I yeah. mean, tell you, it's his hair. Yeah, the yeah. hair gonna bond back. It'll yeah, the right. hair gonna bond back together. I had never seen no shit like that before, yeah. bro. Deattached, reattached, yeah. That's the thing. Niggas don't be cleaning their locks like that, bro. Uh, I mean, people do the free form. Yeah. You know, they do their, their no, own. This ain't form. look like no free form, Drew. What I'm saying is. This, this look like some niggas who just ain't washing shit. But that's what I'm saying. That's, that's niggas that are free form. They don't do shit. They a just, lot of niggas who free form don't wash it. You can free form and still wash it. Yeah. But a lot of niggas just letting it rock. Yeah. Just that's, I think that's what Cam be doing. Cam Newton. Mm-hmm. This shit free form. Okay. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that shit is. I mean, they, 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 I think when they, they tested Bob's lock, he had like 32, 36 different species of like dangerous lice in his locks. You know That's what I'm crazy. saying? Like, he know. never used to wash his then. I mean, Bob had a lot of hair too, bro. Yeah. You know, they, they found a lot of locks. I mean, locks carry a lot. I mean, I walk in, walk through a hookah, sto- a hookah store or a smoke shop. Yeah. All that shit's in your hair. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know how. How much dirt and and grime really is on you? You know what I mean. Until you really, it is in your hair. You know yeah. that's that's just really what it is. But when you think about it, that's a, a lot of intake, a lot of energy that you're taking going through your hair. You know what I mean. You got to get that shit out. Like I do, I get like a, a 
their ACV rents. Probably about like once or twice a month. Uh just to get you know, get really deep into that shit. But my shit they never look crazy. Like I've seen I've seen them shit on Instagram all the time. Like the, the reels just be rolling. Yeah. Niggas I mean locks really be That water up. be looking crazy. That water be looking absolutely disgusting. Like <laughs> yeah. throw the sink away, bro. Yeah. But yeah, they should have lined it with some plastic. Yeah, I just found that very interesting, though. But nah, you could do a she, lot with she hair. She did bro. a great job, mm. and she, you know, just reconnected them. Like, but that, that's probably like a three hundred, four hundred dollar job. I'm thinking six minimum. Yeah. That's yeah. probably on the low side. Uh, if it's in Florida, you're talking at least a band. Yeah, because them, them girls really do that wig shit yeah. down there. They ain't faking out there. She literally separated. Like it, it had to have been at least. It was just different spots. Yeah, and she had them all like in little balls or whatever. Like you know, you know how when they separate and all that yeah. shit. Because mostly that's and that's she, you paying more for the time than the service. Because you yeah. gotta, she gotta cut that shit off. She gotta can wash and condition your hair. Separated. She gotta wash. She gotta separate your hair. Then she gotta wash all the shit. She just cut off you. Mm-hmm. Get that back right. Yeah, because I think what she did it. was she cleaned that. She cut them all. She cleaned that. Then she had to clean his hair. Mm. Then separated the spots in his hair. Then took the locks that she cleaned and. Reattach some shits. Yeah. That's a lot of work, man. I mean, it's a big job, and it's you know, know how long that should take. A few days. That's, that's probably that's like, a, oh, that's like a, at least a, a day process, bro. Yeah. I mean, if some people take, you know, you can take your locks to your loctician, and she can go ahead and wash them and do all the shit, dry them out. Yeah, you just come back, and then you come back the following day or whatever. You might come in, and she'll cut them and go ahead and do the detox, and then boom, you come in and she reattach right. them and shit. But um, I pray I don't have to ever have those problems. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit just be... Yeah. You know, niggas just don't take care of their hair, bro. Niggas don't take care of their hair, man. But, yeah, I, I found that shit very interesting. But, hey, Russell Simmons, man, hey, get your shit together, bro. Yeah, man. Don't call that's, on the people. That's, that's all crazy. I mean. 65, you still got to get your shit together, man. That's how you know, man. Niggas got different paths in lives, man. You just when he say broke, though, his broke might be different. That's what I'm though. saying, too. Like His, his broke, broke might be different. His, he's still sitting on at least at least five M's. I ain't going to say Russ broke, bro. Yeah, bro. bro. It's no way. I'm not hearing that. He, he, he's that's a, what, that's he's how, a hip-hop pioneer, that. like, bro. Like, bro, he not flat-ass broke, bro. No, I don't think he flat. I think his flat broke is did something different. Because I'm looking at he, I'm look, I looked at the video, bro. He said he, I'm broke. But, nigga, your, your headboard was like eight feet tall, my nigga. You ain't broke. Nigga, you not broke, nigga. So I be paying attention to shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Me too. Nigga, you ain't broke, bro. This shit <laughs> yeah. says net worth three hundred and fifty million, monthly income two point five million. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> And that's that's, that's a different type of bro to me. I remember there was some mention about sixty M's or something like that. I don't know. I don't know, but we'll I mean, see. We'll his wife is shit. her net worth. Well, his ex wife is her net worth is two hundred million. Kamor? Yeah. But well, somebody got bread because the kids gonna be good. Yeah, I think regardless. she hit hard with that baby fat shit though. Mm-hmm. She hit hard as hell. Definitely did. We all know some girls who had that but baby who's, fat jacket. Who's the girl that he said that? That took everything from him, though. I think he was talking about her. I could be wrong. No, because he said she took everything, but he was on the phone with the daughter. Had to be the wife. I was talking about the wife. He's mm-hmm. probably talking about Kamora. But wasn't he married? He got married after her, too. Mm-hmm. That's their daughter, though, right? No, for sure. Yeah. On the phone? So yeah. he had to be talking about her. All right. If he's saying, oh, she took everything, I'm broke, he had to be talking about her. Cause they ain't been together for some years now. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. They've been they've been broken for a while. A long and she, time. she's been dating other niggas and all. Like, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I had Kamora is 48, bruh. Damn. So she was born like what? 72? Something like that. 74? Like 73, 74. Had to have been 74. Yeah, like 74. Yep. 74. That's crazy, bro. Time flies like a motherfucker, bro. Sad. So, um, we got to uh, talk about Sukiyana getting harassed, man. Unfortunately, there has been a slew of this happening over the last couple of weeks. So, first, she had an incident at, um, looked like this basketball event that she was hosting. I'm saying, because I didn't know what it was. It was like a little Duval at the table. Funny it, was Marco. A, it, was a, it was a celebrity game. Some celebrity game. And this nigga, YK Osiris, just walks up to the girl from behind and start tonguing the girl down. She looked very uncomfortable, even after it. Like, you could tell that's not what she wanted to have going on. Then we see Suki on, on his podcast, on Candy Candy's podcast. Um, 
and her co-host shows her his dick in the middle of the interview. Oh, he did that? Nigga took his phone and was like, what you think about that? Oh, he tripping. I was, thought it was just a conversation I was going on. I didn't know that he did uh, that too. Nah. Oh, he was nah. out of pocket with the conversation that, now. That's, that was out of pocket enough. And then he did that. I didn't know he did that. Yeah, yeah then he, he did that. Yes. Yeah, I never yes. knew that. That's so, so the part that you talking about was when everybody was getting on him about. And then there's a part when he was like, like she, I think Candy was talking and she was listening. So he's not talking at the moment. It'd be no different from like if you talking and I show you something on right, the phone. Right, right, yeah. He was like, what you thinking about this right here? He's showing, dog, that's and crazy. She just, and she's just looking like, you know, like, and I'm thinking something so like, damn, bro, like, that's, that's fucked, fucked up. up. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, there's been a lot of discourse around it. And all I'm going to say is, bro, if a woman is uncomfortable, she's uncomfortable. There's no need to even debate that. That's number one. Number right. two, just because you have a woman who may be in that field, that don't mean that you get to just, quote unquote, figuratively and literally whip your dick out on her, bro. She still has a choice of who she has that energy with. For exactly, like- <laughs> bro. She still has a choice of who she wants to have that energy with. Just because you see a porn star walking down the street, that don't mean you go grope a porn star, whip your dick out on a porn star. No, like, it don't there's work still like a that. level of respect and... Respect that somebody's space that comes with that and consent. Yeah, consent. Just that's just consent. What it, that's all you need to be said. Consent. That's all you need to be said about it. That's it. I mean, she's, and she's it, it was unfortunate to see, you know, people trying to do the thing about oh well when you carry yourself a certain nah bro. nah man that's because that's we and we said it before I said a few pods back like we all know Sukiyana is very sexual when it comes to her persona. That's how she give it up. That don't mean if Sukiyana walk up in here, I'm gonna be all over the girl. No, bro. Like it's a it's a respect thing, and she at the end of the day, she gets to choose who she puts that energy towards. So you can look, but don't touch my nigga. And then just even the question, you could tell like whoever her, whoever her co-host was, Candy's co-host was that nigga needs to go get put down somewhere because that was ridiculous, bro. That's lame. That's some lame as hell. It's it was lame some as lame as some sick shit. If you ask me, like, why it was do you, both. why y'all want to be known as that nigga? Well, my thing is this though: like, if you ever been on Twitter or in any for a second, bro, you see how Su- Suki gives it up with her nigga. Like, she has a nigga that she does OnlyFans with. Yes, yes. And with like, that nigga, and like literally. Like the nigga peed on her in her mouth. Like he's done a lot of shit to this woman, mm. bro. And you're going to take it upon yourself to walk up to her and taste that. All right, <laughs> I can't. Bro. That's it, crazy. Even saying that like see, that, but like he it, probably don't even know about that though. That's the thing. He knows about it. <laughs> Come on. I think YK Osiris is a nigga who just be doing shit, to be honest with you. Like, that nigga was completely out of line for he's, that shit. He's one of them oblivious type niggas, but at the same time, it's like, bro, come on, bro. Bro, you're mad to walk up yeah, to kiss that thing tripping. in the mouth, bro. You're tripping. Like, this, kissing somebody in the mouth is already kind of like. That you don't know? Yeah, that is yeah. wild. That's tripping. That's tripping. wild. That's tripping. Remember, y'all remember, y'all remember a few years back when I was on Twitter and I'm saying, bro, like, Cause a nigga was saying something, and it was in the lines of like walking up to a girl in a club and kiss. I said something like, "Bro, walking up to a random person and kissing them in the mouth in the club is wild. Like that's, that's a, wild that's a shit. Wild. That's a wild. You don't know where people mouths have been at all that. So she yeah, she might Drew, just came out the bathroom doing God knows what. Yeah. So Drew, you make a great point, but for me, it's deeper than that because it's the you don't even as a man you don't even think and stop and say, "Bro." That's a woman I don't know, number one. Number two, we in a public setting. And number three, bro, like, the sense of entitlement to think that I could just walk up to this woman, regardless of who she is, what she do, I could just kiss her in her mouth. Yeah. She she put out some tweets. I know she put out um, she put out a note about it. She was very disappointed. She felt like she wasn't, like, she couldn't, she essentially didn't feel safe in the environment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um she did say she accept YK Osiris' apology. I don't, I don't remember her speaking on you know the podcast interview with uh, no, she Candy. Cool it was I did see a video post them like they looked like they was kicking it, they was cool or whatever. I'm not gonna put too much weight on that because I don't know if there was a conversation had between them two. Mm-hmm. But just to see it happen to her like within a span of less than a week, mm-hmm. 
like I'm saying, like niggas at the end of the day, consent matters. Yeah. Um, That's what I say. Why do you want to be known as that guy? Like, and of course you got because now tone. I'm looking. I'm looking at if, if I ever see Candy Podcast again outside of Sukiyana, I'm looking at this dude like he's a weirdo. Yeah, that's kind of a stain that Candy. I mean, hold people been calling her out, basically like wanting the explanation for right. those actions and shit right. like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be known for having a co-host who essentially scaring the women yeah. away no. mm-hmm. or being on some weirdo sickle times and. It's unfortunate, bro. Like, you, I mean, you got to just weed these niggas out as much as possible, dog. Yeah. Like, invading a woman's personal space is never okay. And then, of course, you got the tone deaf niggas. Meek Mill. Hold it down on some hood shit. No, nigga. We not. Like, nah. No. That's not no hood shit, bro. Violating women and doing those, those weird shit, bro. That's not no hood shit. That, that happens in the hood, unfortunately, as it happens in all kind of environments. Meek was speaking on some let his brother beat his ass and shit like that. Like, man. Don't man. let the... I mean, but no... I mean, when you talk he's still, about He's assault, a grown man. He's going to be a held accountable for what he did, bro. Do y'all think he should go to jail? Uh, I mean, if she if she's saying that she's choosing to forgive him and move forward, like, you know, ain't nothing to really could do. Like, he do need to know that that shit not cool. Yeah. I mean, you know it's, it's it's a tendency of people. You know what I mean? Like, I I mean, I I can go back as a kid to remember being around Black Bikers Week to see women walking down the street with, you know, barely nothing mm-hmm. on and scandalous clothing and, you know, seeing grown men come up and grope them and, you know, shit like that. And that's how they gave it up. You know, and that's what they welcomed it, essentially. You know what I mean? They didn't stop them or say, like, rape or anything like that. You know, I think for her in that the instances, like, yeah, your lyrics are very very you know vulgar and say all like spit in my mouth and all this wild shit that nigga you know, like what she really be saying but ultimately you got to separate the music you know what i mean from being to real life shit like brother this if if she's not on that time or y'all not on that time you don't walk up and do something like that that is offensive and yes you can face jail time so you know ultimately yeah it is up to her but if she does want to press charges i'm here for it because ultimately, bro, we've seen, we seen examples that people have these tendencies of doing wrong, and then it gets worse. It might be another another person. You know Trey I mean? Songs. It might be, yeah, definitely. You Recurring know I mean? theme. And it might not even be to a woman that have, it has any status. Mm-hmm. So her voice might not even be heard. Who to say, and I'm just playing devil's advocate, advocate like Drew say, what if YK be getting down with women like this who have a lesser status, who right. can't speak up? Right. Or are trying to speak or up, are but trying nobody's, to speak up and nobody's hearing, hearing this yeah. falling on deaf ears. I'm pretty sure if he's done that to Sukiyana, he's done that to other random women. Nah, you don't walk up, grab him by the net, and spit up, bro. Mad. But anyways, you know what I'm saying? Like It's still one of those things like, you don't do this shit, It's bro. a respect. That yeah. shit crazy. Yeah. That shit crazy. It's, like, a respect. it's a lack of respect and feeling... Like a respect and sense of entitlement. And Buddy with the pod. How much, how much are you yeah, feeling? Yeah, Buddy with the pod was just. He got to go. That was crazy yeah. sense Kenny, of entitlement. Kenny, yeah. Kenny kind of got to get him off the show. Like, ain't nobody going to look at him serious on no other topics. Yeah. Especially, and her. Like, she got to hold it. She yeah. hold weight on that. Yeah. Because now I'm looking at that shit like, bro, like, it's no way that Kenny allows him to stay on this platform. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, you know. I because mean, even, even Kenny is kind of like, you know. She puts the provocative envelope and wear it on herself, but it's like at the end of the day, you still got to protect each other as women. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Like I don't know, bro. That shit just I mean, that ain't look right to me. So I want to read some of me sweets. Um, don't do this to him, please. He's a good kid. Just slap him, and he gotta let you. He gotta let you something. We don't need our young bulls tore down for mistakes in this hypersexual era. I support Suki. Hold that shit down on some street shit. Um, y'all drawing a big line between men and women nowadays on social. It's getting bad in the black community. All this internet superficial shaming, judging, gaslighting only hurts us people. And it's a lot of people who need strength, especially young black men. He might got a rumble Suki brother, anything but this same internet to each other down stuff. Suki can do what she wants. Uh, she feels violated, but let me mind my business. Yes, please. Please mind your business. Please mind your business. Meek is so tone deaf, it don't make sense. It's just clueless. And, and it don't make sense. Um, Hold it down on some street shit, nigga. This ain't no simple possession Then he no ended it with saying, charge. let me mind my business. This is not a simple possession. You know, y'all ain't... We're talking about sexual... Assault. Harass, assault. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sexual assault. That's what that is. Dog on the podcast, that was some harassment type shit. Like, yeah. oh, and all of it is bad. 
I'm not saying one is one act is better than another. Like nigga, you in the middle of a podcast interview and you showing her your dick because you think that just because that's what she display, you're entitled to that part of her. You get what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure they didn't had other women guests on that podcast. Yeah, he, sure he didn't do that with nobody else. That's my point. Yeah. He hasn't done that with nobody else. But you, I gotta, see, I gotta, I gotta go back and do some research yeah, on that's that. That's what I'm saying. Now, but that's what you, that's why you gotta draw the line, bro. Like mm-hmm. you don't get to, bro. Shout out to our niggas from um from Jacksonville, Random Max, when they be having their after dark shit. Mm-hmm. We done seen a, a porn star that they had in there after us. Mm-hmm. We not. We address her the same way we address anybody else. Mm-hmm. Hey, how you doing? We took shots and with we her know, and all. Like, we was yeah, chilling. We, took, we, we was chilling. Y'all niggas took shots with her, but we view her as a woman at the end of the day. An, any other woman. Just yeah. because she do porn, that don't mean we entitled to, oh, whoop your titty out. Yeah. Put at your dress up. At the end up. of the day, bro, they get a choice on who they have that energy exactly, with, Exactly, bro. Like that that's just what it is. Now if she came in that type of time, that's a different conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We ain't had that conversation. Mm-hmm. It was it was on some cool shit. Well, as it should be. We all gentlemen at the hey, end of the hey, day. Hey, to be real, bro, I'm not saying this to be on no no PC shit. This is real shit. A lot of them strictly keep that shit job based. Mm-hmm. Like that's what they do for content purposes only. Outside of that, bro, you probably couldn't even get a hug from a lot of them girls. I'm just being real, bro. Like, That's a I, fact. I, I've seen it. Like a lot of them, just keep it strictly to the content, bro. Like we, this ain't on no, no. You can't hit me up. No, there's no meetups. None of that shit. Mm-hmm. This is strictly content. Mm-hmm. And most of the times, a lot, a lot of niggas think, oh man, that girl easy to touch. Well, she easy to get with. Nah, you be surprised, bro. Yeah. A lot of niggas is not touching them girls like how y'all think. Yeah, I mean the bedroom is the bedroom, bro. And if you catching somebody in the street or an interview, bro, like she's. Working, she's you know, working. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You don't. She do not shit on that like, time. Yeah. Yeah. So even the venue should even be on some like I need to protect my image. I might need to press some charges. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it all falls you allow down that under your umbrella. Come on, yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You there's nobody really there to. to now nobody else will feel shit. comfortable to come through there. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's You're not I giving it up Candy, like that. Yeah. Candy got to make a decision like with this nigga going forward. Like on some real shit. Like that just was out of pocket to me. I didn't know that he did that. I just thought it was like the, the weird interview shit, but I didn't, now you tell me that other shit. I'm like, it's no way she keep the nigga on that show. Nigga it's, did a dick rating live. It's no right. way. Live. It's, it's no way she keeps him on that show. It's no way. Jesus Christ. That's wild. That's wild. I got too much to say about that, man. Y'all niggas, man. And if y'all know niggas in y'all circles who be on that tight time, man, separate from them niggas, man. A lot of y'all niggas be protecting some of y'all homeboys who be who be on that type of time, bro. That That's shit's a bad cool. look, man. It's a bad look. Yeah. It's not player. Nah, not at yeah, all. That shit ain't player, man. That's why I said, man, end of the day, bro. Niggas is gentlemen at the end of the day, bro. Like we ain't I never I just just how I was raised, I never want to be known as that guy. Like come on you know now. What I'm saying? Like come on now. I was raised by a lot of females, bro. I respect all of them. Right. They taught me how to respect females. I feel so bad like, for the parents who raise their sons. That's right? what I'm who saying. Still choose like, to do that type shit. A lot of them dudes yeah. come from good households. They be they yep. be doing shit like that. But like, you know what it is? The entitlement. Mm-hmm. It's a sense of entitlement. Like you feel like you're owed a woman's body because of your status mm-hmm. or your money. That really be the thing. The niggas who who got money and feel entitled to some pussy, mm-hmm. or a even a kiss, or a certain sexual interaction with a woman, like no, bro, like mm-hmm. it don't work. Like there's still that, respect. Man. There's still respect that needs to be had amongst two parties, and <clears throat> you niggas is out of pocket. And if you could donate that shit, you just as bad as them niggas, I in mean, my opinion. You're seeing niggas are getting slapped, and they're not playing with these, you know. With, when it comes to these sexual allegation charges, you know, R. Kelly's one of the greatest in uh, of the world in music, bro. Is in jail for his his for his wrongdoings. You know what I mean? What you did is wrong. It's that simple. So if there's charges pressed, bro, I'm here for it. Yeah, because that shit is uncalled is uncalled for, and it look bad on as men. Like we shouldn't be moving this way. How you felt about Lou Duvall and Funny Marco and them in that situation? They jokey as fuck. You know what I mean? They should have stood up for her. You know what I mean? That's how I feel in in that in that instance. You be, hey, bro, you you're, you're bugging. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I also yeah. feel like I also feel like in the moment that probably caught a lot of people off guard because nobody knew 
Cause I watched the whole clip and they Suki and and YK they had some dialogue before that happened. Mm-hmm. So like oh, okay. when when it actually happened, everybody probably was like, I don't know if this was a part of their plan or yeah. you know what I'm saying. Like, no, nah, you're right. That's a that's a fair point. Yeah. That's so I mean. it's like, but you know Suki and you know her nigga. So yeah. it's like, bro, even regardless of that, bro, you're bugging. Yeah, you bugging. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, but that at the same time, that's why I'm, I'm kind of like. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, know. I I can see I can see the young nigga on some like I'm about to shock the world with this yeah, one and, yeah. and go in to do this. Yeah, shit. that's what he was looking for. Yeah, that's what he was looking for. Oh yeah, for. you shock your the world all right yeah. in, in your ass in court. You know what I'm saying? Laying your ass in court. But yo, bro, you know it is. That's shit crazy, bro. It's it's a nasty world out here. You know, niggas are really living nasty like this, and this niggas with no statue doing the same shit, bro. Like still doing like niggas groping women as they're walking by in the club. You know what I mean? Like. <sighs> Jesus, when would we learn? But it looks bad as a man, as a black man, like yeah. that. It looks bad. You know what I'm saying? Because women already feel like black men don't protect them. Yeah, facts. You know? It just adds to the- it. Just is, it just adds another another notch on the fucking belt. More blanket. Come on, man. Shit. Grow up, bro. Grow up. You got to get these niggas out of here, man. So, uh, you know... Uh, we uh best wishes to Suki too. I don't know, you know, she probably going through anything, you know, traumatic from that from that whole situation, especially with being back to back. So hopefully she get back into a good space, you know, she continue to do do her thing, do what it is because um yeah, sexual assault is a no go, bro, no go. So we had uh another girl who had a little fifteen minutes of fame that had a TL in a frenzy, you know, the Home Depot girl. You know, mm. and that whole situation to me was funny because from the time that shit first happened up until now, I feel like it was a lot of clout chasing within that. Um, some on her end. I'm not gonna say completely that's what she wanted, but I kinda felt like when she when she when she opened Shaq's DM, bro, mm-hmm. she exposed Shaq, that's when I part of me felt like, okay, like she really loves this attention. Then of course you had some OnlyFan creators who you know did the whole Home Depot thing. Oh, my first day at Home Depot, just being goofy, being yeah. weird, trying to catch a wave, and it was some weird shit that niggas was doing too on her too though. They, a lot of them had leaked her address and shit. So that was niggas who who had doxed her address. Yeah, it was some niggas doxed her. Um, she had actual like like OnlyFans girls and sex workers. Like approaching her like on some well shit you got the clout why you ain't trying to get no bread off it like we would have did that. Well, she did have a tweet that was like, "Oh, she I'm glad I could. That. Yeah, I could. I'm glad I could be an example for some girls to see that you don't gotta do that in order to you know." And then that became like a battle between yeah, the women. That's what it was. You know that's what, what it was. Yeah, it became. I mean, a that's battle. fair. That's fair. But it's like, and I, I felt, I felt, I felt, I felt her on that too because like. It's like if me me gets right when he said we are in a in a hyper a hypersexual era, right? I'm not against like a woman saying like I want to show girls that you don't have to you don't have to do this to yourself. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 not I'm not against that. You know what I'm saying? Like call it what you want to call it. I'll stand on that. Like you know what I'm saying? Like people say she took a shot at them. I mean, I don't want my son to be a drug dealer. I don't want I don't want my son you know doing if I had a son I want him doing X Y and Z. That don't mean you know, our our dope deals gonna be like, man, fuck you, nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? They not gonna do that. So what's what's the what's the dish? What was the difference? I mean, for me, honestly, I just feel like it wasn't really necessary. Now I know the discourse that we've had from you know seeing it on a TL, but right. that's still down on, that don't apply to all of them. No, it don't. And it's not even me being. I'm just being a real. I mean, I, I'm not being on no pander and shit. None of that shit. I'm just being I real. It. It's like, I get what you're saying, Mike. But what's the what's the big deal about that though? Like, if she was saying, hey, "I want to uplift young black women and they show them they don't have to do X, Y, and Z," that's like the same thing of a, of a man was saying, "I want men. I want niggas to see me working and getting shit the legal way. You don't gotta stand on the corner and sell dope." That's the same shit. It's the same shit, bro. Mm. You trying to you trying to show the youth that it's a different way of doing shit. I don't see the difference as the nigga who got a daughter, bro. I don't see a difference, bro. And maybe you may feel a different type of way because you have a daughter. So I, I you, it's, yeah, it's I, I'll take that. I'll take yeah, it. it's a different perspective. But at the same time, too, man, like we always say, the internet service. So you take what come with it, right? Mm-hmm. But like I was just telling Drew earlier. 
a lot of them, that shit is just a medium for something else. I'm just playing devil's advocate. So a yeah, lot of them, a, when, they do, medium, they, when, they gotta, do, when they do their content, they shit is their content. And then, you know, who's to say they might not be the, they may be the girl who's doing that. And they may be taking a class just like her. I understand that. You get what I'm saying? That's all it. I'm saying. I'm not, I don't really to really be a deep you dive got, discourse. You got, you got dope boys who doing X, Y, and Z to do some to get to another place too, but they still got to wear what come with, whatever come with that. It's still But shit. I feel like that's a separate conversation though. That's all I'm saying. I feel like it's a separate conversation from the topic at hand no, because I feel you're saying. I feel essentially, you're saying. that didn't warrant her getting her address Yeah. No, released. it didn't. You know it what I'm saying? It didn't warrant her all them girls coming at her a certain way. That's that's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's, I feel like that conversation is separate. And then at the end of the day, that goes with anything. Like if you decide... When you go sign up for a particular job, okay, you know what come with. If you, for example, if you go work at the paper mill, you know when you go work at the paper mill, you're going to come home smelling the type of way. Yeah. You might have certain reactions to certain gases you may be around and all that type. That goes for anything. So, of course, when it, we talk about that, yeah, because the internet is forever and, you know, there's a social, how can I say, a, a, a certain type of social peer pressure that comes with that shit. Mm-hmm. Trust me, I get it. But from the overall conversation with it, it's like, okay, this girl's posting at Home Depot. They said, oh, you should start an OnlyFans. She don't want to do that. To me, that was weird. I won't take that away from her. That was on some weird shit. But I think the way she was deep diving on it, me personally, I felt like she was kind of indulging the attention, bro. I'm not even going to lie. I felt like she really enjoyed the attention. That's my honest opinion on that shit. Amen. I could be wrong, but I feel like when you post a Shaq DMs, my nigga, that tells me that you really feeding into this. You really feeling into this attention. She could either be feeding into it or showing that she really staying on that shit. I ain't trying to do none of this extra shit to get ahead. Like I'll be, I'll just be me. I can, I look at it both ways, and and I wouldn't post my DMs, but I don't see I, from 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 reading what she been saying. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't take it away. But I just want to post my DMs. That's not how I give it up. Her posting that DM was kind of crazy, though. I haven't even cap. But that's what I'm saying, bro. It's like, it's, it's, it's the attention. You see what I'm saying? Like, and somebody had mentioned her age. She might have been around 21, 22. Because she's in school. I'm assuming college, of course. So it's like, yeah, that's, that's kind of like, I might give her a little bit of pass for that. At the same time, I don't. Because if you, if you woman enough to stand up and say, you know, oh, yeah, I can show girls who, you know, there's a certain way of getting this. Then at the same time, too, it's like you then you should know better in terms of what comes with that when you leak at some DMs of a notable stature. You get what I'm saying? And we all know why Shaq was diving in your DMs anyway. He trying to holler. She ain't with that. We don't I don't know what she with. <laughs> she, that's her that's part of her way of telling us. I would say we don't know. I say we don't know what the rest yeah. of the DMs say. But I just feel like at, at a little bit prior to that point, it was like, all right, Ma, like we get it. Like, kind of dragging. I'm not saying that girl woman address should have been docs all that. She had to switch jobs. Cool. Cause she I had, mean, she got to move. It's she a lot. It's moving. a lot of weirdo niggas out here, and they be on some weirdo type time. Trust me, I get it. But at the same time, too, when it comes to this attention shit, man, you got to pick and choose your battles with the attention too. Mm-hmm. You got to know when it's pulled back a little bit. You know, it might be on some, hey, if you got some shit to promote. I mean, we've seen it plenty of times. People get a viral on it. They got some shit they promote. They don't really get nothing past that. But when you continuously feed into it, feed into it, you don't know what avenues that shit going to take you. You that's, get what I'm that's saying? That's what I feel like Mariah, Mariah Mills trying to do. I do not want to talk about that she, bitch no, no I get what you're bro. saying, but I feel like she's trying to... She's <laughs> yeah, still, tweeting, she's yeah, still yeah. tweeting trying to get into something else. As we else. speak. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Still tweeting that bullshit, but... um. I mean, I'm just glad she's not hurt. I hope she don't get hurt, but it's a fine line with this attention shit on social media, bro. Mm-hmm. It really is. It really is a fine line when it comes to this attention shit. And all I'm going to say is, bro, like when, when it boils down to it, man, you know what you're signing up for at the end of the day. When it, in terms of that conversation that me and you were just having earlier, like, trust me, I get it. But I think everything can be, everything has its place. No, for sure. Cause think about think about the the women who have the OnlyFans who are not seeking attention. You get what I'm saying? Or the ones who strictly just keep it to okay, this is what I do, and I have this over here. You get what I'm saying? Like you do have the women who really, we talk about it all the time. The women who really be about that life, 
they ain't really with the extra shit. They do, they get their shit, and then they keep it pushing. Like, I know stripping and OnlyFans is a different, it's two completely different avenues, but we've seen the stories of the girls who were strippers. They stripping for whatever. It could be for them to have their own hair school. It could be for them to start their own business. It could be for them to, for them to finish college and shit like that. Like, uh, for example, uh, Players Club. Shorty was only stripping so she could get through college, bro. I yeah. mean, that's a, that's a reality. Of course, throughout the movies, there were certain things that happened to her that I'm not with, of course, that she, that she had to take. Like, she in line getting, getting fitted for her, her graduation cap. Dude walk up to her, tossing the money in her face and shit like that. True. I understand that. But you do have the women who, okay, this is what I do for my content purposes. And then, okay, I have this side. And then at the end, they just boils down to, are you, you know, are you built for it? That's how I look at it. Because I think a lot of that shit at the same time, too, Mo, like, being real. I think you have them who do it for the attention and the money. Then you have the ones who just do it for the money. Mm-hmm. And they, that's the ones I'm talking about, like, who ain't really trying to do for the extras, you know, on that other shit. Like, they keep it strictly business. Because I'm telling you, bro, you'd be surprised at how a lot of them girls... I mean, you see it. You can see it on a lot of their uh, they bios. They have it all in their bios. Yeah. They have their OnlyFans link in there, but no meetups. No this. No that. Da, 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 da. And that's a fact. So you never know. The 9 times 10, they might be finessing them. There. You know, they probably just only showing feet in there. You never know. <laughs> hey, man. Well, like that's I said, That's a different man, convo. What's going I, on I in think there? with the attention of this Shaq, this nigga carry his ass up the Home Depot. Buying, it, it, like, it, it was layers was a, to this it shit. It was a lot going on. It was, yeah. it was a lot going Shaq on with this Home shit, Shaq went to Home Depot. Man. He buying... He, 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 he playing angel investor. He buying uh, random people dishwashers and dryers and shit. Like, he just, you didn't go up there for that. That was that was to continue he was, he to was, paint. He was, a play, he was still playing on that. He was... Exactly. He, he was, was playing. playing he not, of course, I don't think he was at the same Home Depot the no, girl worked at. But he was still playing. He was playing off that shit. It was a double entendre. He definitely was. Bro. You're not going to tell me you just decided to go at the Home Depot all of a sudden, off the heels of this, yeah. and just go buy some people some washing machines. Nah, man. You on some creep shit, man. Like, let's be real here. Like, And nah, you just nah. spotted with Brittany Renner. Teach his own. Do your thing, but... I'm not rolling with that shit there. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, we not doing that. Hey, man. Sorry, Shaq. I can't really get with you on that, my brother. So, um, yeah, <laughs> pack that up. So, the Nuggets won the NBA Finals, man. Nuggets won the NBA Finals, man. Uh, Drew, y'all had a good season, good run. Uh, came up short. No nuggets just all in all, man. I think they just asserted they will on y'all, man. Um, I think they click when it matters. They didn't really let any runs against them get them down. Um, and roll guys stepped up. Roll guys stepped up tremendously. And you know, Nuggets are the champions for the first time in NBA history, man. Um, Joker, I'm putting them top five center all the time, man. Um he top five. I got him right at five. I moved I moved Bill Russell at that top five. See, you you move Bill Russell, I move Wilt. That's cool. Either one. I'm not against it. Um, I just feel like with the talent, on top of the accolades, he there. he's there. And he's only going to continue to add to his personal accolades in terms of all NBA, all stars. Um, championships remains to be seen. I'm not going to get out here and do all this, you know, this... Weird shit y'all niggas love to push. Niggas, Every time somebody wins a championship, say the nuggets about about the dynasty. A, a, no. a dynasty. You can't. You're not a dynasty until you win three championships. They haven't even got to the second one, so cool out on on, on that <laughs> dynasty shit. But as far as Joker, he, I think it warrants him to be top five center all time. Two time MVP, three time All NBA, um, five time All Star. I think um, Finals MVP championship. Averaging a damn near a triple double throughout the playoffs, averaging um, almost a triple double in the finals. I mean, he has had one of the greatest playoff runs efficiency wise that we've ever seen, especially from a big man. Now he's doing some. He has literally done some shit at the center position we never seen. So I'm gonna always give credit to some shit I ain't never seen, especially at a high clip like that. He's essentially a point guard playing center, my nigga. We have never seen that. You cannot discount that. 
So, I mean, bro, like, listen, I, I used to kind of have these conversations a few years back about, you know, the NB Joker, and Shaq thing. Like, I never take nothing away from Shaq. I got Shaq third all time on the centers list, but I was saying it early, bro, and I'm saying it now, bro. Like, Joker is better than Shaq, bro. A lot of people ain't going to like that. I'm not saying he's had a better career than Shaq, but when we talking about a player, I know the dominance thing matters, but, bro, if I got me a center who go get the same production wise, but can also give me ten assists, to me that says a lot. Who can shoot from more spots on the floor than Shaq? Got more range. I'm not mad at nobody picking Shaq over Joker. I never say that, but yeah, I think sometimes we get caught up on the names sometimes. And this is not for me trying to say to get no clicks or try to get no none of that shit. I this how honestly I feel. You can go check my tweets. I've always said when it came to the skills. It's certain shit that Joker can't do. I mean, that Joker can do that Shaq can't. It's a fact that he got more range when it comes to shooting. He's a better passer than him. You see what I'm saying? Like, he could get buckets inside the paint, too. His footwork is right up there with the greats. Nah, his footwork is crazy. You see what I'm saying? Like, so I think I'm warranted to say that. But as of right now, I'm putting Joker top five center all time. I got him right at five. Number one, I got Hakeem. Number two, Kareem. Number three, Shaq. Number four, I got Wilt. And then number five, I got Joker. And that's how I'm giving it up, man. It remains to be seen. He's still 28 years old, so he got a lot more basketball left in him. But, yeah, man, that's if how If he retired right now, he talks about it. That's my me. little fun there that I got for y'all, man. Like, at the end of the day, I get it. You know, the diesel is a diesel. But it's some things that that man can do that you can't. And they don't take away from what you can do. But, yeah. Salute to Denver and Joker for getting it done, man. Um, what you think? Kind of the same sentiments, man. Uh, Joker, I always, I always will say Joker got robbed the MVP this year. Um, Out of the year, he definitely should have got it. That's the crazy this, part. Yeah, he definitely should have got it. He got robbed. I say he got robbed. I don't care what nobody said. He got robbed. Um, winning the championship with the finals MVP, just a, you know. Cherry on the top of a great season that he had. I do feel like Joker back. is kind of dragging the whole I don't care about basketball thing a little bit, though. Like, he I'll needs to kind of pull back, pull back a little bit on that. I'll I don't that because at the end of the day, bro, shit. this art, this my nigga, this, we y'all do this basketball this, niggas play yeah, for that this, ring, yeah, bro. Niggas play for that ring. You ain't about to be on some some lacks of days ago. I don't, oh, I don't know where my finals at. MVP trophy at. I don't know where it's at. Nigga, you better go find you that shit. You better go find that shit, nigga. Like, <laughs> Jordan wasn't doing that. Braun wasn't doing that. Yeah, Kobe he, ain't doing that. He's dragging that. that. He's dragging it a little bit. He's dragging like, it some, You bro. see him. Them boys won their rings. They always had them trophies with them. We ain't yeah, about to bro. disrespect the game niggas like that. put too nah. much work in for yeah, that shit, man. This shit means something. Because a lot of niggas ain't going to ever get that. Ever. This shit means something, now. That shit holds some weight, bro. So, yeah. I, I I I'm with y'all on that one, but other than that, man, the man the man different, bro. Ooh, he different. <laughs> he different, man. Like it's just what it is, man. And um, you know, like you say, he's still he's still painting his pictures, so you know, we don't know what what's in store for him. But we don't know what's in store, man. You know, so I got to say, Drew, what you what you what's your thoughts, man? Big up them niggas from Denver, man. They did the damn thing. Um. You know, fell short, man. Uh, fault shots wasn't falling. Jimmy waited to the last second to really turn on. Um, costly fucking turnovers at the end. Um, you know, just mistakes happen, man. But you know, you you move on, and uh, you know, you get ready for next season. So I'm excited to see what happens. Uh, you know, they already got some moves happening and shit. But Denver, man, Joker's a bad man. Um, and it looks like our league is. It's now going back to the big man, you know? Like, it's 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 going away from the sharpshoot. I mean, not saying going away. The shoot, but is, still, the shoot is still prevalent, but it's, it's, it's you, need a, you need a big. Expanding. You need a big, yeah. You're going you to a, have to. You need and, a big. and the bigs have not have to, but they're expanding their range. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we about to see it Thursday, Victor. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. Um And so that's, you know, that's exciting to see because I I, I enjoy a, a, a team that can – fundamentally move the ball around and and get your big man included. Yeah. You know what I mean? We came from that. That's all we've seen from David Robertson's, yeah. um, Tim Duncan. Never has great ball movement. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Do. And so yeah. that's 
that was exciting to see, even though they did the shit against my team, but it still made it, uh, I mean, anything you learn from who wins the championship is how do we be like them, but how can we be better than them? And, you know, for me, I think that is one thing that, that's one of my biggest takeaways. I, I mean, triple-double from Joker, triple-double from them, um, uh, Eric Garn, AG, um, Gordon Murray, did his thing. He did you know his thing what I'm saying? PJ did his yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, the bigs really, you know, they showed up, bro. So, interesting to see how this plays out. I mean, clearly we, Bam needs a, a true help, like a big man down there to help us. Zubak or none of them. Nah, we ain't need none of that. We need somebody young. Um, the whole thing around Dame, Dame seems he wants to stay. So, okay, cool. Uh, I'm so over that nigga, man. You know yeah, what I'm I'm, I'm not, I don't want no more reports about this nigga. I just seen that today, actually, Drew. Yeah, yeah like, oh, he he still wants to stay. He was, okay, dead it then. Yeah, just leave dead us, leave everything. Us leave yeah. us alone. Dead yeah. everything around this nigga, bro. I don't want to hear no more Dame possible trade. If you're gonna stay, my nigga, stay. Yeah, no more cryptic shit. Yeah, so why you even come alone. on the pod? You know what I mean? That was the thing. Like, I think he he came on there just to stir up shit, bro. But. You know, it yeah, is. that Miami and that yeah. shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, why even come on, on there to even? Why say even that say shit? it? Yeah, if you gonna stand firm on it, like, nah, I'm 100 percent. And then you leave, over. you leave with it saying, of course, Miami or you know what I'm yeah, saying, like, bam, bam, my boy. Yeah, like, what you mean? Of course, leave clearly it's alone. not. A, leave us alone. Clearly trying to it's not. Of course, that image, man. yeah, bro. And I, and I get it's it. Goofy, man. it's goofy though. But it's stupid. You know what I mean? If if you're not gonna, if you're not ring chasing, cool, stay out the way. You know what I'm saying, like, but you know I think that's also one of those things because we could have probably pursued uh, Bradley Bill in a in a more aggressive way, yeah. but you know that shit matters too. That shit matters. Yeah, like, you right. All right. It's alright, bro. We you know we'll be back, and um, you know shout out to the squad, bro. But it was it was heartbreaking. I ain't gonna hold you. Like it was it was one of those things. Like you just you get there, you don't have it, bro. Yeah, you, you I felt I felt I felt that the year before this yeah, season. So like, yeah. damn, dog. I like, had to watch us lose three straight. Like we lost, we dropped three straight, bro. Those Rose players, Darren and Terrell Rose players in the finals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the Gabe Vincents and shit, man, bro. You know, but you know, big up those guys. They played their they hearts still out. Got there, man. Yeah, they get there. You, know, you know. I mean, saying? it's so. it's a pat on the back, bro. It's not a handshake. You know I mean, we got to get back and we got to win this thing. So. I feel you. I mean, we got to get to the blockbuster trade. The speaking of, speaking of Bradley Beal. Bradley well, Sunday. Beal. Bradley Beal's an official. He's a Phoenix son. And it's going to be uh, Beal, Booker, and Durant. And Aiden as of now. We don't know if Aiden's still going to be there. Yeah, they only have five people under contract as of right now. So um, they still got plenty of time. I feel like they roster plenty of money to be put around. So ain't no telling how that roster going to get filled out. I will say, though, I do like that with Vogel as a defensive-minded coach. So you already know they're going to get the offense. But if he can get everybody to buy in defensively, yeah. it can get hectic for niggas because if them niggas are hitting offensively and they got the defense, it can be tough sledding, bro. And I know like people love to talk about, you know, it's not – no, a big three does not guarantee you a championship. Let me start off by saying that. It doesn't. But if everybody's on the same page, everybody's clicking and it's going out it's supposed to be. It causes a lot of damage. It causes a lot of damage. So <laughs> you have Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal. Each can go get 30. Mm. Um, Devin Booker, I've seen him play games as point guard when Chris Paul was out. He's a very underrated point guard mm. when he needs to be. He can facilitate the basketball. He's, he's, he, his did playmaking, that. he did that in college. Yeah, his playmaking can definitely uh, grow now. And... I mean, for what they gave up, man, y'all should have been let Bill go. Like this is what y'all was gonna give up for him. Yeah, I mean, ask, y'all gave up Chris Paul, Angie Shaman, and a couple of second round picks for him. Yeah, let me ask y'all, what what does Bradley Bill add or take away from going to Phoenix? Like in the aspect of, like, say you remove a KD, KD gets hurt. Now you only got the dynamic of Bill and. Booker, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, you get buckets. Yeah, you got you got to run. You got to run. You get you get buckets. You I mean, run. with him and Booker, it's, they got to run. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with him and Booker, depending on and, and it's tough to say because only there's only five players on the roster, mm-hmm. so it, I can't really deep dive like how a lot of oh, like I seen Rick Buecher talking about. I don't see the Suns as a championship contender. They have five players on their roster. Mm-hmm. 
it remains to be seen July 1st. Yeah. July 1st, we'll see all the deals that get handed out probably a couple of days before when you know they agree the terms mm-hmm. before they can actually sign on we July 1st. Who, who, we don't know who busting down the door to yeah, play with them we boys don't know. right now. I'm seeing Bruce Brown might go over there, which yeah. makes sense because he can get his money. You never know. Yeah. Like Draymond Green, it's too many possibilities. Draymond's going to be restricted free But agent. if you have that core of three players mm-hmm. and you surround them with some good role guys, mm-hmm. you're not going to tell me it's not going to be hard for niggas to beat them, especially mm-hmm. with a defensive-minded coach. Yeah. They don't have an offensive-minded coach there. They yeah. have a defensive-minded guy. You take- and I think it's a perfect pairing, honestly. I yeah. think with, with Beal, KD, and Booker, it's... It's going to be hell, and the course of conversation is going to be around KD again. Yeah. Him being on another super team. Him being... But the part that y'all leave out when it comes to this KD shit, and I tweeted earlier, y'all never address the fact that these niggas be wanting to play with him. Yeah. yeah. The Warriors y'all called him. He didn't call the Warriors. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all always leave that out. When him and... We seen them clips of him and Kyrie in the, in the halftime during All-Star weekend talking about we didn't know what it was, and it became that. Okay, James Harden, he went and go play with that. Mm-hmm. So then KD... Okay, what we here? Devin Booker and Chris Paul was part of recruitment for KD. Like these niggas be wanting to play with him. Yeah. Y'all always discount that. So y'all can have y'all little petty crying narratives about, oh, he he still can't win with his own he team. He got all his help. Man, listen, we <laughs> off that shit, bro. It yeah. don't matter because at the end of the day, I've heard Draymond Green saying out his own mouth, they don't win the championship 17 and 18 without KD. Yeah. Regardless of how the finals may have happened, 4-0. The second year, 4-1 the first year. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I don't see, me personally, based off how the 2016 finals ended, I don't see them beating the Cavaliers 17 and 18 without KD. Yeah. So, with with Suns forming this new team, do they beat Denver? I mean, granted, yes. Yeah, off of, we don't know there's only five people to the team because, of course, Denver has a a starting five, but I also have... They have like, the chemistry edge. You see what I'm saying? Yes, mm-hmm. they have the that camaraderie. Matters. Yes. That matters. So... I can't say that, though. It'd I be mean, a tough... It'd be a tough conference finals, though. Aiden got eight, bro. Like, he didn't... He's not a dominant big man when it comes yeah. to Joker. You see I what I think I think what's going to partly be... He's a big piece to that team. Mm-hmm. But Aiden has to buy in. If Frank Vogel could get him to buy in and... Get him out of his selfish mentality of touches yeah. for the overall goal because you're not going to get more touches than Bill Booker and Katie. It's yeah. not happening. It's only one basketball. So, But you could provide a great role. It's not like Aiden can't go get buckets. Yeah. Gotta, it's the assertiveness. You got to get him where you finna. It's the assertiveness when it comes to Aiden. He don't assert himself. At all. Aiden easily could be an all-star level type player, but are you going to assert yourself, my nigga? Yeah. Now, you done escaped two trades. You 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 so done far, escaped the so two far. trades so far. Yeah. Big but, ones. The one for KD and not the one for Beal. Yeah. So obviously they 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 Vogel, see something in you. No, Vogel already said that he wants to keep he wants to keep him around. He yeah. Wants to keep him. I think Vogel can get can get with him. But I tell you what though, Beal Booker and KD will be on his ass. They will be on him for mm-hmm. the old because they're all pushing for overall goal. And I think when July first hits, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I gotta see how that team fill out. Yeah, I mean it's 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 an interesting topic. I just don't see just the way to see like the fear and fucking Aiden when you know Joker's coming down with the ball and he has to guard the man at the key. You know what I mean at the top of the key, mm-hmm. bro. It's kind of tough. And you gotta deal. You gotta deal with Joker. However, he take the ball. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. So you know, is is it enough right now yeah. to beat the NBA champs? I it's it's. So it's something to see. I mean, Cal yeah. Kuzma also. I think he opted out in uh, of his contract, so he'll be an unrestricted free agent. Mm. Oh wow! Yeah, that's a dude that spoke heavily about getting his his guarantee back. If if they're able to pull Bruce Brown and Kuz, that's a great start. Mm-hmm. But they still need a point a point backup PG. I mean, mm-hmm. Dennis Schroeder might be a possibility. I, I saw that he was talking about going back to the Lakers. Going back, okay, mm-hmm. that's cool. But I like Dennis though. I like him too. I like Dennis. Good um, defense. You know what I'm saying. He's very, he's yeah. very. Uh, you don't want to take Pat Bev? It's gonna be cheap. Good. I no. wouldn't be against it mm. if I'm the Suns, as far as a vet guy. But I do think they need a facilitator as a backup PG. Mm-hmm. I think they have their point guard in Booker. Yeah. So I don't think they really stressing that. I think yeah. Booker's gonna run the point, and I think we're gonna see 
a better version of Booker. Because mm. even back, just to get back on the KD shit, because of course that was the first thing that everybody wanted to talk about was, you know, oh, this, that, and the third. But y'all never think about why these niggas want to play with him is because it's easier to play with him as well. KD, for much as a scoring threat that he is, he's a great playmaker as well too. And he he demands so much attention of the niggas can get their shots. Like, imagine the nights where we will see, like how we saw, I think it'll be even better than, I can't say that because we've seen them niggas score 104 points in a playoff game between the three. But if we can, at least, if it could get to the same level as KD, Kyrie, and Harden, it's going to be tough. But the, the only thing that's going to derail them is injuries. So if the Suns don't yeah, have no injuries, I think it could be on some KD, Kyrie, Harden shit. Health, I think it can be. The health gonna be the biggest thing. In That's this. it's gonna be the biggest thing. <laughs> I was sorry, but twenty seven minutes ago it says update. Adult film star Mariah Mills says she is dropping a sex tape for uh, with Zion Williamson and tells the Pelicans to trade him now. They're not worrying about that girl. <laughs> And she's she can go to jail for that shit. So she can play around if she wants. That's crazy. Yeah, if she can play around if she wants. She fuck around, go to jail. Yeah. That shit is not. Yeah, that shit's it's not. not I'm pressing charges on her dumb ass. Yeah. yeah. Hey, revenge porn ain't gender specific now. Nah, it ain't. That shit go both I ways. Think, I don't think she know that. Yeah, she can play around if she wants. Zion Williamson get some more money on top of that contract he got too. <laughs> and she ain't got no fucking money. It don't man. matter. It's she principle. got some bread, but I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm per- it's a lot of purrs in this world, bro. Oh, man, some incels all up in her shit. Yeah. She's not even all that to me. She's not nothing to me, actually. I mean, she's <laughs> she's not attractive at all. No, that's a fact. But, um, I mean, I'm interested to see how this shit just... We got to wait till free agency hit, man. That's all I really got to say. Um, yeah. I'm, I am I see some shit shaking in Charlotte, though. And I'm I'm excited for it because it's right up the road. Off the heels of Jordan selling the team, by yeah. the way, for three big billion. Up, big up to Jordan, man. I mean, he bought it for $273 million. million. 2010 yeah. and now $3.1 billion. 13-year flip, man. That should take time. Investment. What are they talking, what are they talking about as far as the... Yeah, what's what Charlotte moves? got going on? Um, so they're, they're talking about... Well, they're, one, they're talking about trading that their pick, trying to... See what's going on. Oh, they're the trying to get Scoot. Yeah. A lot of people are trying to get Scoot Henderson. Yeah. So the Pelicans in talks talking to um, Charlotte, yeah. talk, thinking about getting that trade. So it's either Zion they're looking for or they're looking for um, AB. So. Talking about Brandon. I mean, yeah, Brandon Angle. Yeah. It'd be the B-A. stupidest shit ever for the Pelicans to trade Zion Williamson. Yeah, I feel the same. It I would be the stupidest shit, shit ever. Zion could possibly go to Houston too. That's the stupidest shit. If the Pelicans trade him, it will be the stupidest trade in NBA history. I'm standing on that. Even uh, even letting go of Anthony Davis? Yeah, I feel like that was dumb shit, Zion's too. Zion's ceiling, I think, is higher than Anthony Davis. Mm. I truly believe that. When when Zion was playing, it was number two in the West. He goes out, they free fall into the play-in. Yeah. To me, that holds weight. I'm not saying they maintain think, two, I but think I think 80, they stay top four. I don't think 80 had an impact on the Pelicans like that. I think they stay top four if Zion does not get hurt. At least top four. So you got to keep this man, dog. Um, do not entertain no trades with Zion Williamson, bro, at all. That's his team. You build around that man because if you trade him, you will regret it. Because they also got a, a pretty high pick, I feel. like Maybe like 10 or 12. Pelicans? So, yeah. yeah. No, was, I don't think so. Uh. They was low, though. They was low in the standings, though. Yeah, because of that, 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 how that Lakers shit went. They got some type of pick. I don't know, but them niggas better not trade Zion Williamson, bro. That's all I know. Do not trade that man. You will be making a huge fucking mistake if you trade Zion Williamson. Niggas bro. really want Scoot though, bro. Niggas mm. want Scoot. That's yeah, he's what an all around. He's an all around baller. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Scoot, but essentially, Scoot a dog. I don't know, man. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they got 14th pick. Yeah, yeah. David Griffin. I mean, it's your team at the end of the day, but I think they know if they trade Zion, they be making a big mistake. That's how. I, that's how I look at it. But the NBA offseason is going to be interesting. We will see how what what more shit is to unfold. I'm seeing a lot of bait, a lot of bait that I don't think is gonna go down, but it remains to be seen though. It remains to no, be no. seen. Draft is on Thursday, so we all know Victor is a spur. We ain't got you got to play around with that. So we'll see what happens with the number two, number two. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't for Charlotte. I feel like it, it wouldn't really be. I mean, it's you get a new owner, you know you. Maybe another franchise player here coming. 
I mean, it's next to Lamelo. Yeah, I mean, you just got to get people back in the stands. Yeah, man. Bro, I mean, Malik Bridges was that's his name. Miles, that was, Miles, Miles, he Miles Bridges. Back this year? He's coming back where? He's coming back, yeah, to Charlotte. Yeah, he on the contract. Yeah, he on the contract with Charlotte. Okay, they never they never cut him or nothing after all that. Because I thought yeah. he was he was a free agent coming up, but then the shit happened. Then. I'm like, not sure. I had to look no, he up. was he was due for I think he was an due extension. for an extension. Okay. That's what it was. I know it was something, but that boy can ball. I ain't gonna yeah. hold you. I like that nigga. They ain't never man. cut him, and then they was like just you yeah. know fall Hand back or whatever. Shit. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, man, niggas in some good hands. It's gonna be a good NBA season coming up, man. And you got Monty Williams in Detroit now. He gonna be uh, leading um, Ivy and and Cade and them boys out there. I feel like this is gonna be he's gonna piece together a revenge team. Oh, for sure, for sure. He get to start over too. He yeah. to start over. He ain't like the Eagles that was out there in, yeah. in Phoenix. He ain't like that. So he get to start over with some with some with some with some young blood and mold him. Uh, got Cunningham I feel like Monty's a good coach. He'll figure it out out there. It's Cunningham coming back, right? Okay, yeah, he coming yeah. back. Chet Chet Hogan coming back for OKC. Mm-hmm. That's oh, another. Shit, that's another big him. boy right there. Yeah. He like what? Forgot about Chet. Yeah. Him and Shay. Him and Shay could be nice. Yeah, Chet like what? Seven feet or seven? Yeah, it? like seven so one. Some right. Yeah, he like seven one. Yeah, and he dribble the ball and shit. All do yeah. all that shit too. And of course, you know, with time they'll get their they uh, grown men weight on them. Yeah, and that shit just gonna take some time, but. I mean, it remains to be seen, like I said, at the end of the day, man. It's going to be a lot of great basketball, I think, for the next couple of years. Basketball is in a good state. Um, John Morant got his 25-game suspension. Uh-huh. You got 25. I felt like it was light, me personally. Um, just based off that recent statement I seen, too, if that's true about how you feel like, you know, the NBA and the media is against him. All right, my guy, but... You're waving around a pistol, bro. You made it this. You made it this way. If all, anything, all your actions are on your own. Nobody yeah. else. And if you think the NBA gives a fuck about being against you, you are sadly mistaken, my dog. You are sadly mistaken, and that just speaks to the lack of accountability. Yeah. And you, you got the 25 games, man. Just do your time, bro. Do your time and keep it pushing. Because for me, to me, it seems like you got a slap on the wrist. And Adam Silver, was, Adam Silver, you could have saved all this build yeah. up for twenty five yeah. game suspension, bro. Okay, I thought right it was up. at least forty games. Just being real with you, yeah. I thought it was forty games. And then he proceeded to show like the uh, gun lighter or some shit. I I saw that, but I think that's an old video. Okay. Well, here's my thing: them even trying to paint it as a toy speaks to the lack of accountability. Because mm-hmm. now you're trying to play with me. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Bro, own up to your shit. Yeah. I would have given him another 25 just for playing with me. <laughs> a toy gun? Yeah. Like, that's... It just continues to speak, but this goes to show that Adam Silver really is a player's commissioner. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, now these players are going to look at it like, okay, like... I wonder how, yeah. how, I, wonder how, I, how, I how can push I can it. How far I can get yeah. It. yeah, how far I can push it. And it may be a little bit more lenient for Jock because he's a superstar. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, too, he's had priors mm-hmm. of these incidents and... You know, we speaking on it. We have spoken on it on a deeper level of the things that could come with that type of energy mm-hmm. that you displaying. And it's like, my nigga, like, a toy gun, really? Now you feel like the NBA and the media is against you? No, bro. Like, these are all your self-inflicting actions. Nobody mm-hmm. else's. Yeah. Nobody's purposely setting gun guns on you so you can get caught. Or no cops, you know, doing a pullover. It ain't no conspiracy to against John Moran, ain't no, ain't no conspiracy against you, dog. What are you talking about? Them the, niggas lose money, a, not a whole lot, but they lose some viewership when you're not playing. Yeah. Especially for the Grizzlies. They got a local TV contract. Mm-hmm. Every team does. So when you're not playing, that affects the bottom line. You think they're going to just want to go against you just because? Nobody give a fuck about that. <laughs> yeah, y'all got to get it together, man. But that 25-game suspension could have been, you could have said that during halftime. <laughs> <laughs> That time of game two, game three or some shit. The nigga had a rollout for a suspension announcement. For 25 games, bro. That's not even a week worth of sports reporting. Like, <laughs> it's a day. You hit 25, down. and then you got to think that in the beginning of the season, bro, 25 games. That shit go by quick. Win. That shit go by quick. You play 25 games by December. Yeah. By November, they probably done. By Thanksgiving, they probably done play 25 games. Because the season start what late no, late October, yeah. So you around fifteen around November. Yeah, I think niggas they no, play. No, it's about twenty. It's about twenty five December around December. Yeah, so I'm saying they they have what at least what three games a week. 
three to four a week. The most games you play in a month is 15. You know what I'm saying? That's like January and March. The rest is like 14. It's in between that 14, 15 window. 13, 15 window. So by the time he come back, y'all ain't really like putting your head down and running for real. Niggas putting their head down and running like right before All Star, post All Star. Mm-hmm. So I mean, he got off, man. He got off. Niggas can say what they want. He got off. I don't really got too much for that. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, you got anything else to add to that? <laughs> nah, man. Just stop doing dumb shit, bro. Yeah, that's, that's what it comes. Niggas have to stop doing dumb shit, man. Stop doing dumb shit when y'all got these girls on these podcasts. Stop doing dumb shit when y'all taking photos of them. Stop taking. Stop doing dumb shit when you got multi million dollar contracts from the NBA. Just stop doing dumb shit all around, bro. Just stop, bro. Because mm-hmm. it's shit dumb. The shit dumb. And then us as black men, we all got to wear the brunt of that just because. We all get grouped together when y'all do some fuck shit. That's just the truth. Hey, Amen. <laughs> That's all I really got to say. So, again, salute to the Denver Nuggets winning the championship. Um, for NBA free agency is going to be very, very interesting. interesting. Very interesting. Um, sh- salute to Joker for nabbing his first championship, his first finals MVP. Um, Mike Malone been getting it in, man, for that parade. I tell you what, but hey, man, he's putting in a lot of, lot of work, man. He talking the shit, he too. He talking the shit, too. But it's warranted, though. It's warranted. Nobody ever had the Denver Nuggets as, you know, oh, we ain't the Denver Nuggets fake. A lot of y'all niggas who've been saying that shit for a couple years now, you got to walk that shit back, so... You know, hey, niggas swept the Lakers. He's still talking shit about Braun. That shit crazy. He got a <laughs> lot of smoke. I mean, I remember the, the, the discourse around the Lakers Nuggets series, though. A lot of people wasn't really giving them niggas no chance of winning that shit. So, I mean, hey, he's he's rightful, you know, to pop his shit, bro. So, we're going to see, man. Um, again, salute to everybody who will be tuning in, listening in, subscribing, liking, sharing the pod. Um, it's greatly appreciated. Continue to run us up. Um, and you know we'll continue to put this shit out for y'all, man. You know, had to had a late upload this week, but hey, man, it's life at the end of the day, you know. But we still here for y'all niggas, man. Uh, salute to everybody doing anything in the city. Um, shout out to Juneteenth, of course. And if you a black out here, man, just be safe out here, man. Be safe. Watch your surroundings. Hold yourself accountable, and put in the work, man. And if you if you uh if you interracial, your Juneteenth was over at noon. That's what that that's nigga what amp is hilarious. That's what bro. amp say, man. Your your Juneteenth was over at noon. That man. shit was hilarious. That shit was over. Shout out to amp. <laughs> you only got twelve hours worth of Juneteenth. You didn't get twenty four. <laughs> so <laughs> shout out to that nigga, man. That nigga's crazy. Oh, that's crazy. Oh no, boys, like big up the niggas, man. Well, yeah, man. Like Mike said, man. Shout out to everybody, man. Showing love, man. Like like continue. Comment and share the pod, you know, all of that. Um, keep continue to run us up, man. We got a lot of shit coming for y'all. You know, that's just it, man. Yes, sir. So, you know, like we say every week on here, man. If you feeling some type of way about something we said, always remember. We're just some messengers. We out. <laughs>